Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mazda Media. We are live on Facebook Live, and tonight we are watching, doing a watch party of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Super Bowl 55 champions against the Dallas Cowboys, who have not won a Super Bowl since the 1995 season. So we are live tonight. The analysts are making their picks right now. Florio, Jack, Rodney, Maria, and Sims have all picked the Buccaneers. Tony Dungy is about to pick right now, and you know he's pick. He might be picking last. Um, we just got another pick in for the box. So right now, the panel on the television right now on NBC is picking the Buccaneers. Undisputed. Drew Brees, same thing. Mike Tirico, same thing. Buccaneers. And you know Tony Dungy is picking the Bucks tonight as well. Nobody is picking them boys, and I don't think Tony will either. And then Tony Dungy uh, picking against the Cowboys. There are the two Super Bowl trophies um, propped up as like uh, stationary prop pieces. They're they're enlarged uh, Super Bowl Lombardi trophies at center field right now for the presentation tonight. As the defending Super Bowl champions, Buccaneers have returned all 22 of their starters for last season. Countdown is on, 11 minutes, 30 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, it is September 9th. We're fresh off the heels from Labor Day. Tonight, we're going to be hosting a watch party and discussing this game all night long so we're ready and um ready so about that um we are ready for game time just about just getting messages left and right here so i'm like who's messaging me here everyone's tagging me in posts and everything and trying to get some comments and um I, I, got a, I just got word from joe he says the new matrix looks really good cannot wait i know i cannot wait I'm fired up for the new Matrix. I know in this show in the past, one of my top 20 favorite movies of all time, and one of Joe's top 20 favorite movies was The Matrix. I actually checked the list earlier this evening. I'm like, who, who had The Matrix in their top 20 by any chance? And, uh, you know, you never know who would have maybe had it in their next 20. But me and Joe, definitely a top 20 movie. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you like, subscribe, follow this channel. We do weekly shows, typically on Thursday. Sometimes there are alternate shows. Uh, nights, sometimes Fridays, Thursdays, etc. Excuse me, Fridays, Tuesdays, uh, sometimes other days. Like Sunday night, we did a special show about wrestling. So we are live talking about this game all night long until Dan changes the subject to wrestling. Because, you know, ladies and gentlemen, Dan will change his subject to wrestling at some point on this show. He just can't resist himself. And I can't resist also talking about wrestling because I love wrestling. But tonight we'll be about football mostly. Dan. You're the lone panel member here tonight, and it's just like 2004, 2005, when me and you were a one-two punch on Sports Now. What's going on, Dan? Well, it's the best combination you could possibly get. Cut the fat out, pretty much. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dan, Dan shoots on panel. <laughs> and also, you know, but also the fact that, you know, I mean, you have Joe who's trying to get a family and family time and you know other things and then you have eric that's probably you know outside of triple h's room hospital bed with a goddamn candlelight vigil it's probably so, like the uh, scene in the yeah. dark night rises where gordon's in the hospital and then <laughs> christian has got the mask on and he's like and then triple h is like the nxt sparks need to come back and then he's like but what if they don't exist anymore? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Eric would be laughing at that if he heard that. He goes, oh, man, he's being compared to Bruce Wayne. Oh, man. Talk, talk about a death blow for WWE right now. I mean, they're getting their asses handed to them. What's really happening is all the wrestlers that were originally like those indie talents, like Brian Danielson, CM Punk, Adam Cole, Kevin Owens, all the guys from that, that realm of the wrestling world of like the Ring of Honors are all migrating into AEW right now. It's it's insane, but it's insanely awesome because I'm like, as much as I've hated on AEW all year long, I'm like marking out Sunday night for all out. I was going crazy for Adam Cole and CM Punk and Brian Danielson, I'm like, this is this is absolutely great. I'm sick of watching these, this footage of Brady when he's younger, and now i got to see him as a quarterback for some other team. Back to you, Dan. I love, um, it, it, it annoys me now, because before, you know, oh, Brian Cranston is the narrator, just showing him in the highlights of him as a New England Patriot, and then all of a sudden, as um, 
you know, Tom Brady wants to be Tom Brady, he decides, well, I'm going to go down south and I'm going to go, I'm going to go test. I, I can win without Belichick. Well, he did win, but still, you know, um, he also went to a team that was literally one of the most stacked in NFL history. So, um, you know, there's that. Um, yeah, but, you know, it, it's it's good uh, tonight, the fact that the a new NFL season is beginning. Um, you know, the New England Patriots hopefully will make it back to the playoffs, but if they don't, my big thing is anybody but the Bucks. Yeah. I could care less at this point about who – I could care less, except as long as they're not in the AFC East, other than the Patriots, <laughs> I could care less who wins the Super Bowl, <laughs> just not the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. Or just not the Raiders, Steelers, Jets, Colts, um, Dolphins, you know, a few of the teams like that. Look, look, look at Brady now, a champion with another team. What the? What in the hell, ladies and gentlemen? What in the hell? What in the hell? Oh, my goodness, this is so sickening. It's like you, you the greatest player of all time. Playing, they played for your franchise, the Patriots, and now moves out, migrates someplace else, and wins a Super Bowl. That basically, he's been on a part of a franchise that won four consecutive Super Bowls. If you combine the Patriots and Bucks, they combined for four straight. And look at them; they got a simple little banner on a sideline wall that just says "2020 and LV." That is pathetic. There it is. Oh, God. The two-time champions, baby. Yeah. Two times, yeah, yeah. That's a, you know, it, 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 it's nice, but at the same time, is it really? Considering the fact that it was 19 years of fucking parks. Think about how much these Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans probably hated Brady all these years, and they were all running to the store to get their damn Brady jerseys and losing their mind because he led their team to the Super Bowl. Well, it's like the fans that hated the Big Show when he was in WWE, and now all of a sudden, because he's in AEW, they're just like, oh, Big Show! It's the Big Show. You know? How many times has he turned in AEW already? Jeez. None. Yeah. What are they doing with Billy Gunn turned Jordan? on him. Yeah. Billy Gunn, yeah. Billy Gunn and Sons. That needs to be the name. Gunn and Sons. Gunn and Sons. Oh, man, it makes me sick seeing Brady as a buck. This is ridiculous. Well, Brady comes out with his helmet on. That's a shock. Usually he's going to have his helmet off for the camera. Yeah, with his stupid fucking hair. Yeah. He's definitely dyeing that hair now. You can see the gray, like, seeping through it. Oh, yeah. He's dying. Yeah. That's a dye job if yeah. I've ever seen it. Yeah. Hello, I'm, I'm Al Michaels. Do you believe in miracles that I'm still on the air 41 years later? Well, believe it. Oh, we get to listen. Supposedly. Huh? This is it for him, supposedly. This is his last year. Oh, I'm not shocked by that. Jeez. Now we get to listen to Chris Collinsworth all night. <laughs> Chris Collinsworth. Al, Al Michaels does not look a day over 85. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, probably 84, I'm thinking. So. Well, the thing about him... The thing about him is he's looked 75 for the last 30 years. Like, he's one of yeah. those guys that's just like, he just looks old. Yeah. Chris Collinsworth. Chris Collinsworth all night. This guy. Oh, oh, gee, he's one of the worst in the business. Phil Simms, Chris Collinsworth, Joe Buck. Probably three of the worst in the business. Joe Buck, Mr. I, I, he doesn't get excited about anything. You, I, like, I'll tell you, you should have heard my rant on Chris Collinsworth in the third quarter of Super Bowl 49 against the Seahawks. I was swearing. I was, of course, I had the flu at the time. I was swearing at the television, mocking the hell out of him, telling him to shut the fuck up every two seconds. Oh, my goodness. Ah, well, I mean, I, the only line that I've ever liked him uh, in that whole, and I've ever heard was when, he uttered the phrase, I think the whole nation was thinking, after Malcolm Butler picked the ball off. He's just like, I can't believe the call. Like, he was the first one to actually say it on a national basis. I yeah. can't believe that call. One of my good friends growing up, and a still a good friend to this day, of course, posted, the banner reveal was pretty awkward. I agree. I absolutely agree with that comment. Oh, my oh. goodness, it was. Oh, man, this is such a generic stadium. But it's it's, it's very nice ambiance to it with the pirate ship and everything. I tell you one well, thing, the, um, Mac Jones and the Patriots got to pull that game off. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, and got, all these, uh, all these I, different people are going to pour into Gillette kissing his ass too. Oh, of course, because all these fair weather Patriots fans are just like, he's still the goat. <sighs> yeah, shut the fuck up. Uh, breaking news out of our social lives: uh, Billy is now out of Facebook jail and walking about Hooray! like a mofo. 
Congratulations, Billy, if you're listening. We acknowledge that you are out of Facebook jail. Uh, his projection is he does expect to potentially be banned again soon. Um, so <laughs> he'll enjoy that while it lasts. Uh, he also had two letters for Zuckerberg, which were initials, uh, for his thoughts on Zuckerberg. So that was also expressed. But congratulations, Billy. We're glad you made it. And uh, best speaking, of luck to your chief. Speaking of acknowledging, we have to also do our mandatory acknowledgement. We, we here at Mazza Media acknowledge Roman Reigns as the tribal chief. <laughs> it's a standard protocol on this show that we do acknowledge uh, each episode. Uh, even Pro though... Rossig Illustrated, apparently. Yeah, I know, exactly. Number two. I, I, I'm sorry I have to disagree with that. Uh, Roman Reigns was the number one wrestler of the year. Um, and really, Kenny Omega is just facing a guy that um, Roman Reigns already beat. <laughs> Buran <laughs> F. Brady. <laughs> Uh, we just got a message. Buran. It's Buran, right? Am I saying it right? I was educated no, on it. No, it's Buran. 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 There's no N. Buran. Okay. Yeah. Buran. F. Brady. Okay. I got to get this down finally. Billy came out to me a few weeks ago and he said, because you're going to use the damn term, you need to get the damn term right. And I go, completely sorry. I stepped out of line slightly. Won't happen again intentionally. So. <laughs> Boo-ra. Marty Gennetti. All right. It's going to be a big night. Uh, Dan, prediction for tonight's game. Buccaneers or what? I mean, you don't think the Cowboys are going to um, do you? This is, this is probably a first because I'm rooting for Dallas in this. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I haven't rooted for a Dallas team since probably like 94. Right. Uh, Jeez. This is like – this is – it's just uh, – it's just the fact that Brady is involved that I'm just yeah. like, yeah, I gotta go with, yeah, I gotta go here with, uh, you know. I'm picking the, um, I'm gonna go 27 17 Buccaneers. I heard the Cowboys were ranked like fourth in the NFC Power Pole projection, so we'll see how they end up doing. It's great to have football back. Uh, Joe is having our second fantasy draft Sunday night, which is, uh, questionable decision but joe needed to do what joe needed to do and that's undisputed that was a terrible decision yeah but he had scheduling not conflict, questionable so. it's a terrible decision yeah you know and uh yeah. I'll, I'll go on the record with that that's there a terrible decision <laughs> they're honoring the victims of 9-11 and we completely denounced the person that took out all the american flags at the cemetery here in the state of i hope he's not bad now god <laughs> He's been slandering you behind your nose, kidding. <laughs> I'll, get a, I'll, I'll get a message later. God yeah. damn it, why? Yeah. Every, I'm yeah, not even on the show and you're insulting me, sorry. What goes into a Buccaneers fan's head, though, when they think about wearing what color jersey or T-shirt they're going to wear? Do they wear red, orange, white, gray, black, or whatever that burgundy or color? Or salmon. Yeah, whatever that. Yeah, salmon, yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Looks like we're having a uh, national anthem here. Star Spangled Banger. Michelle Williams. Not the actress, but the singer. It's funny seeing the old names up there. Warren Sapp, Derek Brooks, Mike Allscott. John Lynch. Yep, John Lynch. Those are some classic players. That was a... Um, I'll admit that 0-2 Buccaneers team was pretty damn good. Yep. Like, I like those a lot better than last year's team. Yep. Uh, I go, fuck yourself, Brady. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was told, go blame Bill Belichick for Brady leaving just now. Oh, jeez. Blame your boy, Billy. You know, actually, I mean, he's kind, of, he's kind of right, though. I mean, he did sit Malcolm Butler in Super Bowl 52 for an apparent shoving match with Steve Belichick is the latest rumor. So, The latest rumor that I heard was somebody talked to, like, his cousin, and um, he was out partying and doing drugs all week. That was the other rumor. Yeah. I heard that he was sick, and then he came back, and they were giving him a hard time, and he told Steve Belichick, you're only you're only coaching here because of your daddy, and apparently a shoving match ensued and all that. So, To give, to give, to give Belichick credit and that coaching staff credit, at least that never came out. That's been like three years now. Yeah. And no one said a damn thing on why he's come out, why he's sad. I mean, I don't know. I've I've... I mean, he cost us that Super Bowl, yes. But at the same time, Brady was being an asshole that whole season because of the Garoppolo situation. And then, you know, I and pretty much, <laughs> you know. I wrote back, 
or just Brady still playing at age 53. <laughs> that, that could be a factor too, potentially, right? The fact that he's like 90 years old now and still playing. Yeah, Belichick was just like, I need to fucking move on. Yeah. The fuck. Oh, yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, I mean, I understand it's Belichick's fault, but still, it pisses me off seeing him in another uniform. Michelle Tafoya. Well, we'll see. I, what do you think? A close game tonight, or you think someone's going to end up pulling this? I mean, could it be a shocker? Could the Cowboys come out and just pop the, uh, but knock the Buccaneers out off guard here early? It well, is... you wonder if they're cocky. I mean, they could have that Super Bowl hangover. Well, they're um, still, they're not like the Patriots who are in multiple Super Bowls. I mean, a lot of these guys are just, they all just won their first Super Bowl for the first time ever. You know, none of these guys, you know, Brady's already flipping out on them in the preseason and all that. It's just, oh man, I tell you. Good to see Dak Prescott back. Hopefully he has a good, healthy season. Wish him the best. Hate to see players hurt, except for Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. But, uh, yeah, you hate to have Dak. Well, plus for fantasy people. I mean, Dak's the last guy you want to have hurt. He corrected oh, me. Boy. 43, and he said 45, and there was no reason to doubt him. <laughs> Mike McCarthy, a longtime failed coach in the NFL against Bruce Arians, a longtime failed coach in the NFL. Both have won one Super Bowl with Hall of Fame quarterbacks. How does uh, Mike McCarthy still have work? Uh, you know, because someone, somebody's already always willing to hire. Yeah, it's just a problem that I have is the fact that this guy had fucking Aaron Rodgers as the quarterback, and he didn't win shit. Yeah. Oh, he won once. Yeah. <laughs> You have Aaron Rodgers as quarterback. You should be at least winning two or three out of that, I'd say. You know what's going to happen is Mo Lewis is suiting up for the um, Dallas Cowboys tonight. Oh, so yeah, I'm, that's the rumor. He said, I'm just, he said I'm just ending this tonight. He goes, it's just enough. I'm just ending. It's I, over. I, I, I caused this. I mean, you would think. I, I might have to shut the um, internet off on the computer here if I'm going to keep getting these little dings. Oh, God, here he comes. Yeah, I'm going to shut the camera. I'm going to shut but the she, was that Was that fan over there? Like, God, uh, like, were they there like, two years ago? Probably not. Yep. Oh, no, not at all. You know, come on. Not a chance. All right, Buccaneers ball first. Buccaneers in white. The Dallas Cowboys in their uh, very rare, really worn navy blue jersey. Blue and silver. Yep. 25-yard line, Brady hands off, uh, rushing play. I don't like this new number change with the jersey numbers either. I absolutely hate it. I just like the more uniform style of numbering where everyone was numbered by their position instead of, you know, right. a running back wearing number seven, a linebacker wearing number nine, you know. You know what are we going to see? A kicker wearing 99 next? It's just, I don't, I don't want to see it. I like, I like the organized style. I guess it's probably nice for number flexibility, but I like the more organized the more organized um, style of numbering systems here. All right, Buccaneers starting lineup. Uh, Tom Brady at the 30-yard line. Dan, is it 14 minutes, 22 seconds for you right now? Into the game? Yes. Okay, good. That means we're streaming at the same rate. That's good. Okay. I thought about well, this actually, earlier. Just a few slight seconds behind you. I was Damn like 14.25. Damn you, Dan. Damn you. Oh, sorry. That's, uh, that's okay. All right, another running play for Fournette. New Jersey number, number seven. Uh, a couple of yards. It on looks that like one. Michael Vick out there with number seven on in the visor. That's true. Yeah, this new this new jersey thing is stupid. This is the most. The like, most... I understand that's how they do it. That's I understand that it's how they do that in college, but still, I just think it's stupid. Yeah, I hated that about college. You know, I hated the NBA when they had those sleeve jerseys, and I was right about that. Now they blast it in retrospect. Third and two. Tom Brady line of scrimmage shotgun formation. Wave in the playoff. Audible. Likes the ball. Brady drops back. And a lot of pressure in the pocket. Up and over. Overthrows Chris Godwin. And the Buccaneers will punt. Dan, your thoughts on that drive? Three and out. Well, I mean, two run plays. Uh, Brady, I think, is just trying to start slowly. I mean, but at the same time, I think he's there's only one pass and you know, the, the pocket was collapsing early on it. He was facing pressure. So he probably went with the only option he had, throw it to nowhere. Yep. 
RKL out of nowhere, man. Jeez. I never would have thought it'd be 20 years later and we'd still be watching him as yeah, a quarterback in the NFL. Alone for another team, for Christ's sake. Oh, it's insane. I think all the players that were driving all a couple of years ago, the only players left out of that draft were like kickers and punters. That was it. It was Brady, kickers, and punters. And I mean, not right. even. I mean, they might. You might even be the only active player now at this point. I mean, Vinatieri retired, right? He was in the league before Brady. Wow, they were able to get the. Um, looks like the punt landed inside the five yard line. Oh, jeez. So the, uh, the Cowboys are going to have to start in their. Yeah, it's down at the. Th- it looks like between the two and the three yard line. So the Cowboys are going to have to start between the two and the three yard line. Um, so that's going to be. Dak Prescott. Yeah. Dak Prescott's in the shotgun standing in his own end zone. What a way to come back from a year off too. Uh, I guess you got to start somewhere. You got to start sometime. Yeah. It's a uh, yeah, shoulder injury too. So throw here up and over big pass play there all the way out to the 29 and out of bounds. Dak Prescott uh, right off the bat. Damn. Their, their blue jerseys look good with it. I don't know why they don't wear it more because of superstition or something, but their blue jerseys are sharp. Looks like that was that a blitz. Cooper? Yeah, Cooper. Amari Cooper, yep. Left side yes. of the field. I see me out of the slot all the way out. Loops to the left side of the sideline. Good completion. He had so much room on that. He had about five yep. or ten yards. This is going to be a running play here now. Here we go. Right up the middle. Five yard right gain about. Zeke. Yep. Pierre Paul out there for the Buccaneers, of course. Famously blew his finger off by using fireworks in the middle of the 4th of July. And if that's not justification for, well, I don't light my own fireworks, I don't know what is. <laughs> Jeez. It's a terrible way to lose your finger, you know? Super Bowl 46 player as well for the Giants. Yeah. So. Yeah. If he was an NBA, he NBA player, a basketball player, that would have ended his career. But because he's a football yeah, player, he can just pad the thing up and go, you know. So, well, who was the linebacker a couple of years ago that had one hand? I can't recall. Yeah, cannot recall. Dak Prescott I, I say, uh, I was in Madden. Oh, was it? Yeah. Dak Prescott looks pretty comfortable in the pocket. His movement's good. Uh, his vision's good right now. He's looking around pretty nicely for receivers. They just going to keep this drive going, especially after that quick start. Forty yard line, uh, thirty eight yard line. Third and one, I formation, handoff to the fullback. Uh, looks like it was Ezekiel Elliott at the fullback position, and he's stuffed at before the line of scrimmage there. So they're going to be punting. Yep. Punt. No, they called the first down just now. Really? Yep. Official, official just uh, indicated the first down. Looks like they played as You know, I did this. I used to do that in Madden. You know, I used to. Um, I'd have Corey Dillon and Reggie Bush. And I would put on goal line formations, Corey Dillon in at fullback and Reggie Bush at running back. And then I would run fullback plays with Corey Dillon. And that's essentially what they... I would just have Mike Allstar. Yeah, I know, I know. But, uh, yeah, I know. All right. First and 10. Ezekiel Elliott out to the right. Cuts inside. Nice little gain there. Reasonable three to four yard gain right there. A lot of good talent in this, in this game, too, Dan. What are your thoughts about uh, some of the offensive weapons on the Cowboys, Ezekiel Elliott among them? I've always liked Elliott. I think Des- Dak has been um, – I think Dak is a is a serviceable quarterback. Amari Cooper is an elite wide receiver. Um, yeah, and kind of everybody else is kind of up-and-comers. Yeah. Um, they also yeah, have a really good offensive line, too. Yeah. Nice side I mean, shot uh, there. First down, first uh, down coming up, and they get it. They're off to the other side of the field now. Cowboys moving well, Dan. They are. It's like almost this. Uh, it look. It, it, I mean, yes. Uh, I think the Buccaneers maybe they're coming in with a little bit of nervousness, a little butterfly mm-hmm. in their stomach, just because of the fact that uh, you know it's a big night for them. They with the first game that they played uh, as the Super Bowl champions, the defending Super Bowl champions. Right. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you're playing the, uh, you know, Dallas has, has definitely something to prove this year because yeah. of the last years, especially Dak last year with his injuries that he was, uh, that he suffered, ended his season early, also on his contract year last yeah. year as well. So he's got something to prove. 
big pass play off a of play action by Dak Prescott to, I think it was Lamb, I believe, and that looks like it yeah, looks hit like the that. ground. He looked like he was in position to catch that. It was a nice throw. Dak yeah, Prescott looks fantastic. Like yeah, yeah, Dak, like Dak's yeah. got a good form. He's throwing the ball well. Mm -hmm. And that line is working for him because nobody was around him None. at all. He, I guess all the top-notch top defense. Yeah. I guess, yeah, one of the better defenses in the NFL. Oh, another drop. Third, ten, third, and, uh, third down now. Oh, jeez. Compound, you know, fra uh, compound fracture. Yeah. A compound fracture and dislocation of his right ankle, which required two separate surgeries, was the official injury. Yeah. That's no good. Oh. Anton Winfield oh. Jr. Now I realize my opponent in fantasy football has got Dak Prescott, and that changes things. Now I got Levante David going tonight on my as my defensive player. <laughs> Offside. Oh, you can do it by defensive. No, I thought uh, it was usually just defensive. You always, you yes. always, you can, but we specified it to be that way. So you can have a defense. You can have, yeah. we have an all, we have a complete defense, but then a defensive player as well. So you have a defense, like a one total team defense plus a defensive player. And if you want, you could have, like, if you wanted to have the Bucks defense plus Levante David, you'd get credit for everything that happened. So you could Twice. have, yeah. So you'd get Levante. So if Levante David picked up a fumble and returned it for a touchdown, you get points there and off the defense. So. It's an Here, Paul's an asshole. Why yeah. are you taunting a fucking false start? Like, yeah. really? Yeah. <laughs> You're lucky you're in this position right now anyways because of the fact that Dak's yeah. been moving the ball well. Right. He had two drops that could have completely changed the drive. Yep. Third and 15, incomplete pass to Lamb. A punt coming up. Fourth and 15. They got bumped back to almost midfield there. So the Buccaneers defense uh, had some good fortune. They needed it. Yeah, I mean, because Dak was moving the ball well, a couple of drops, um, you know, and then, of course, the Buccaneers had a three and out, so. Yeah, they got, uh, Levante David got right through that block, too. A good punt here is going to yeah, be their David, key. Right on them. Yeah, they'll need a really good punt, just like the Bucks just had to hold them off. That was a nice drive by the uh, Cowboys, honestly, though, for Dak Prescott's first uh, offensive drive back. That's going right into the – oh, this is going to be a good one. That's a good one. That's a real good one right to the six-yard line. That's a, it's a good punt right there by Anger. St. Anger around my neck. What, what band, Dan? What band sang that? Huh? Saint, what, what band sang St. Anger? St. Anger. Metallica. Yes. Metallica breath, dude. Dude, it's good to watch football again. I'm kind of, um, I kind of got sucked in the middle of summer here, and um, you know, it's um, it's like you kind of, you know, with basketball going a little later this year and baseball going on, it's like, man, it's like all of a sudden football's back because it seems like there's always that bigger gap between basketball and football, and all of a sudden this year it's like right in the middle of the NBA finals, practically ending, football's back again, you know, so it's it's a heck of a um, Heck of a transition, but uh, hopefully things return to normal sooner rather than later here. Blue Jays up 2 nothing. Year, Go ahead, Dan. Last year was weird because we had the um, the NBA Finals was going on, like, right in the yeah. middle of the pace, right in the middle of football. So oh, it's yeah. like, but, you know, this year everything's kind of gone back to somewhat normal. So, yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. Well, it was actually kind of fun watching basketball in the fall last year. Uh, it was pretty yeah. cool. I kind of enjoyed it, but... Uh, We'll see how things go. But uh, right now, the Red Sox are uh, not playing tonight. The Blue Jays are beating the Yankees 2 nothing, And the Red Sox hold a half-game lead over the Yankees. And a 1.5 lead game lead over the Blue Jays. So the Red Sox are uh, holding that wild card number one spot right now. End of the fifth in the Bronx. So that's an update from sports. And then um, other than that, uh, well, I guess we're getting ready to see how Tom Brady is going to do. Um, I'm thinking, you know, usually Brady has those terrible starts sometimes where he overthrows some receivers in the early going, and then they go on the sidelines. They'll kind of look at the plays. 
uh, see what they could have done, get an idea of how the defense was coming out, then start changing their sets around. So I'm expecting some big adjustments. Um, so again, I think, you know, defense obviously is going to play a big part here by the Cowboys. They've already forced a three and out, but they got to get the better of Brady tonight. So do you think, you think age is going to start showing here with Tom Brady or what, Dan? What's, what's going on with them? Um, you know, it's, it's the thing about it is, is that the, the key to that, to this whole season is the fact that like, you have to keep him protected. If you do not keep him protected, you're in trouble. Yeah. Because one bad hit, that's it. Yeah. Like, you can call it a day. And, um, yeah, it's still amazing statistics for me for all 22 of their starters came back for the season. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, you get a place of magic with the fucking cap. Crazy to I think mean, that that's the first time since 92 is that graphic had just displayed. Washington, yeah, I know. Washington, I mean, yep. Yeah, and that was also before free agency and all that stuff, right. too. I mean, this is the free agency era, so, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, because back then it was, I mean, it's amazing to me the fact that NFL free agency didn't start until, like, the the early to mid-90s. Yeah, it is. It's unfathomable. Was, yeah, because it, it, baseball, it started in, like, the, or the mid to late 70s, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and but it was happening in the NBA and all that. It, it, it happened all the time. Buccaneers like, first NFL, down. To Mike Evans. Like, nice pass by Brady. See, we're unbiased here. We'll we'll admit yeah. it. Fuck him, no scared. <laughs> Fuck this guy. Yeah, I run plays like that in Madden all the time. Those slants, like inside, like that from the slot area. You, that's oh, like cut and butter. Yeah. Another pass play by Brady, over slightly overthrown, a little bit low maybe for Mike Evans, second and ten coming up. Brady looks like he's in pretty good form, though, as far as what I've seen so far. He seems to be kind of, you know, there's a little bit of miscommunication there between him and Evans, but ultimately I thought that was a pretty good throw by Brady. You know, it's amazing to me the fact that I remember 15 years ago when, um, oh, 10 or 15 years ago when uh, Brett Favre just kept coming back and all this oh, stuff, yeah. and I was just just fucking retire already. Just but then with Brady, but with the, but then with Brady when he was a um, Patriot, it was just like, oh, just keep it going, keep it going. Then Brady leaves, and now I'm just like, ah, oh, just fucking retire already. Yeah. It bothers me that people in New England probably own like Brady jerseys and Buc- the Buccaneers jersey, and probably like Super Bowl banners from this past year's Super Bowl. It's like really, uh, uh, Brady to Gronk. <coughs> Patriots and Buccaneers coming up week four from Gillette Stadium, so that's going to be a hell of a showdown. Of course, that's, that, go ahead, Dan. That's going to be fun. Might have been an offside League, by the uh, Cowboys there. Big pass play by Brady, going deep, deep, deep to uh, Antonio Brown, and that's caught, and they're on the opposite end of the field now. Yeah, that's going to be a heck of a game in week four. A.B. Yeah. Could, big controversy with them coming to the Patriots, but none of that uh, followed its way to Tampa Bay, though. God, you, you, that still annoys me. Yeah. Because I, I, you remember watching that Dolphins game where he made the catch? It's just like, yep. there's no way we're losing this. Like, I'm yeah. just thinking to myself, I, got, I already got plans about the Super Bowl, and then fucking three days later. The Patriots oh, there, another I'm pass play. Like, Buccaneers into the red zone now. Yeah, I um. They were getting ready to kill it, you know, and then after that, I just kind of threw that team right down after that. It was terrible. Absolutely terrible. You know, my, I was always under the, uh, I, I was one of the people that was just like, huh, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, AB, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not like Hernandez. Yeah, I mean, it feels like someone. It feels like someone like it feels, it feels, this feels like a Madden franchise where someone took Brady, Brown, and Gronk off the Patriots and put them on the Buccaneers. I swear to you, who did yeah, this? Yeah, who uh, did it wouldn't this? be me because it would yeah. be the Patriots. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Fournette, a little bit, uh, a couple yard gain there inside of the red zone. Yeah, it's um. It's really too bad how this all went down. It really is. I mean, people say, oh, the Patriots won enough. I'm like, yeah, I know. But if they're going to win, win here, not there. Brown still looks pretty good. He's got some wheels. He was getting, he broke open on that first of those two pass plays pretty nicely. Yeah, I mean, um, still a valuable threat. Um, you know, if you, uh, 
the first thing you have to do if you're playing the new Madden with this uh, Buccaneers team is you have to go into the franchise mode and change the ages on these guys. <laughs> and then they'll retire next year for you. That's Dan's weekly football advice. Another pass completed and looks like Chris Godwin. Dan's weekly football advice during the NFL season. I mean, the Buccaneers have so much talent, though, on their offensive side and their defensive side. I'm getting, starting to get concerned Brady's using some kind of illegal substance or HGH at this point because the guy is like 40, 43, 44 years old, and he's, just, he's yeah. going like it's 2012 still? And seven years, well, ago, they, seven years ago, they were saying his career was over. Uh, that's true. Now he's out here seven years later, and he's just throwing darts left and right. It's five for six, 81 yards in this drive. Well, you know, uh, maybe he, him and Frank Thomas are taking that shit. Yeah, the, New Genix, Frank yeah. Thomas, New Genix. Brady, Don't worry. touchdown. Two. Chris Godwin. Got Six it. on the board for the Bucks. Dun, 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 dun. Nine plays, 94 yards, four minutes and nine seconds. They look like absolute pros zipping their way down the field. Buccaneers. I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use a quote from a stupid little man. Vintage Tom Brady. Yeah. Vintage Brady. <laughs> Vintage Brady. <laughs> yeah. This fucking guy. Hasn't he won enough in his life? Yeah, I know. If you gotta win one with the Patriots, that's what I say. Win with the New England Patriots. Extra point is good. Seven nothing. Buccaneers, 5 minutes, 23 seconds. Brady throws another touchdown. This is his 300th career game in the NFL, of course. What did you think of the three-game preseason, by the way? A lot better, right? Um, you know, it cuts the fat out. I mean, um, it's going to really do hamper on some records, you know. Like, uh, True. That's, that's the problem there, the people. Like, that could kind of hurt the validity of some records because yeah. – you know, it's not like with um, Roger Maris' I mean, Astros. Well, that was just bullshit. <laughs> uh, that that was that was just complete and utter just bullshit. That whole fucking thing. Like, oh well, he played in the hundred. Yeah, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like, that that was an era. You know, Babe Ruth hit sixty home runs in an era where uh, well, the amount of games I think were lo- was lost though, was, wasn't it? It was 184. Yeah. One, no, not 184. It was 154. Okay. And then they added games, I think. Um, they added games because of expansion. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's, you know, the game was growing, obviously. And, uh, you know, but then they, that's the thing about it is, is that the, the commissioner and everybody else had such a hard on to keep Babe Ruth's records, like, sacred. You know, and it's like the same thing that they did in 74 when Hank Aaron was chasing the record because, well, he was getting death threats, but that was more of a racial thing than anything else. <laughs> but, you know. I mean, the thing about it is records are made to be broken. Sorry. Yeah. You think Peyton Manning sitting there right now? Peyton Manning was thinking to himself when he retired a couple of years ago. He's like, I'm going to be the number one passer of all time. I don't need yeah. Tom Brady's records. Now he's looking at it, and he's just like, he's taken all my records, and yeah. he's got like four right. times as many Super Bowls as I do. Right. He's like, Brady's like, yeah, okay, let's take that record and this record. Oh, that record, I'll take that one, too. Thank you, Peyton. Thank you. for It's amazing that Brady's won, what, two, two or three Super Bowls since Peyton Manning retired? He's won three Super Bowls yes. since Peyton Manning retired. So he won three Super Bowls before Peyton ever won one, and he's won three since Peyton Manning's last Super Bowl, which is crazy. Right. You know, and it's like, and he didn't need that defense to win a Super Bowl last year because he was comparable enough. He threw 40 touchdowns last year. Yep. You know, and, uh, oh, tonight's show, Jimmy Fallon promo. Fucking jerk off. <laughs> he sucks. He's fucking terrible. Anybody that sits, if anybody sits there and is like, oh, I find him funny, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Oh, beautiful city of Tampa, the beautiful city of Tampa. I should be down there. I'm hoping next spring for some rest, rest and relaxation. <laughs> All right, kick us off. Save like in a Tampa Bay Rays game. It depends who they're playing, though. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 
If you're playing a good team like the Red Sox and Yankees, you'll be there. Yes, I will. And the gal will be there, so it'll probably have to be the Yankees if it's the Red Sox. Uh, like, I fuck oh, jeez. <laughs> the Yanks. You know, my grandfather, yeah. my grandfather and brother lived next door to each other. One was a diehard Yankees fan. One was a diehard Yan- a Red Sox fan. Next door neighbors their whole life. And brothers. Yeah, I mean, that's that's got to be tough. I mean, especially, too, when considering the 60s, 70s, and 80s. It was, well, 60s and 70s, at least. You were just fucking Red Sox were just getting completely owned by the Yankees every time. Yep. Pass completion there. First down. Cowboys down 7 nothing. Five minutes to go in the first quarter here. NFL kickoff game on NBC. We're streaming it on Peacock. NBC. WNBC. NBC. Gallup there. We wouldn't be so, we weren't so good. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's hilarious. I guess the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be wearing the white jerseys quite a bit. They released their list of jerseys they're wearing for each game, and they're going to be wearing the white jerseys quite a bit this year, including up in New England in week four. I don't like the Patriots' white jerseys at all. I'm not a big fan. Well, I only like it when it has a Super Bowl patch on it and they're ho- 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 hoisting the Lombardi trophy. Right, yeah. I do rush schemes, though. The color rush, the color rush uh, jerseys are sick. Yeah, the color rush jerseys are awesome. Yeah. Those I like. The stripes on the white jersey is not a big fan. Another catch here. Gallup again. Across the 50 now. And about the, uh, I've, always also, I've also been akin to the red, the throwback red jerseys. Oh, yeah. Like the away ones. Those are sick. They should try to make the, you know the blue ones they got right now? They should try to make yeah. a third color jersey. That's like a modernized version. And it's like red with like white and blue stripes on the shoulders. Yeah, no, I agree. 100%. Yeah. Those are sick. Yeah, that'd be pretty sick. I, I agree. Think, I think I have a Revis jersey that's in that style. Yeah. Like the old school red. This is, this is how we prefer Buccaneers players to leave the Bucks, come to the Patriots, and win a Super Bowl here, not leave the Patriots. Oh, a little hand. Oh, nice fake. A little bit of a handoff, fake, and then a handoff, and then a fake pump pass, and then a couple yard rush there. People wonder why I still play Madden 17. It's like, I can still play Revis. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Revis Island. I just download the historic Patriots teams, which are kind of a little bit uh, whatever. But yeah, I gotta start playing that game again now. I've been playing. Uh, well, I had WWE uh, WWE on today. I've been playing. Uh, MLB the show I finished up about a week ago. I was playing a lot of NBA 2K the past week. Kind of bounce around. Yeah, I know. Like games. me, we go through cycles. Yeah. All right, Dak Prescott, shotgun formation, second and third, fakes the handoff, running right out, and he's going to throw that ball away. Uh, they're marking it complete by Gallup, right at the edge of the wow. sidelines there. That was a threader, but he oh, had the toe done. Yeah, let's see. The catch is good. The toes are in. Let's watch the ball as he lands. He has control of the ball. That's a catch. That is a great set. That is a great catch. Yep, for sure, absolutely. Drive extender. Yep. All right, looks like a fake hand, a pump play action outside to the right, completed to the tight end. Dak sure. looks phenomenal tonight. Yeah, he does. They keep they're running good plays for him too. They really are. They they've kind of. Uh, Mike McCarthy is actually showing good coaching ability. Who the fuck knew? <laughs> fuck yeah. Gray beard now. It's shocking to me that the Packers with Aaron Rodgers and the Saints with Breeze never went back to the Super Bowl. Rodgers still has a few more shots, but even then it would be about an 11-year gap at best. Yeah, I mean... Um... Play action, nothing. Blitz caught. Low. Lamb touchdown. They're going to say short. No, nope, they're wow. calling it a touchdown. Nice play there. There was a lot of nice pass rushing draw. there. Brother. That was in double coverage, too. Yeah. Yeah, it was. You're right. That was double coverage. He went right over the top. Yep. Through the safety. Winfield Jr. I love it, too. He started. It was something like a decoy, and then boom. Yep. 
That was a heavy blitz by the Bucks on that play, too. Was. He kept his body very, he kept his core of his body very stable there, too, when he got hit. Made sure his body went right forward and not out of, they try, trying to knock him out of bounds. Lamb uh, looks like he's going to be a good complimentary to uh, Amari yeah. Cooper. We got an he's going to be a problem. Looks like maybe, uh, who we got here? See, this is, this is the stuff that st starts to prevent teams from repeating or challenging like they did the year before. This is what always happens in this league is that these teams are great the previous year and they come back and all the anticipations that they're going to go right back into it again. But then all of a sudden players start to get dinged up. You know, and then another player gets dinged up. And another. And then the next thing you know, yeah. four or five key players are down. Well, you look at the Patriots in Super Bowl 51. Super Bowl 51... You know, they had won. They had made the big comeback against uh, Atlanta the next season. They did go back and play Philadelphia, of course, the the game where they just came up short. But they were also missing their top, one of their top wideouts and also their best slot receiver with Julian Edelman and also one of their best defenders in Dante Hightower, who both were lost to injury that year. Yeah, it is crazy to think that in retrospect that they were able to win without Gronkowski. In that Super Bowl, which is absolutely yes. nuts. It is insane to think about, but at the same time, I mean, it's just, I, um, <clears throat> there's a, a new thing online. There's a new documentary series online that goes into the history of the, uh, Atlanta Falcons. And they spent an hour on just that game. And it's just like, you're looking at everything like, and it's amazing at one point, it's like 99.8% probability that they're going to win this game and then with it <laughs> all of a sudden shit just turns yeah unreal that was an amazing comeback kansas city chiefs what do you think back in the super bowl this year high chance hey, you know what i i the afc is a very winnable conference, I feel like. Uh, but I, you can say that pretty much right now, I think, about Because the NFL, I think, right now has maybe four or, five, four or five teams in each conference, at least. Not even. Maybe four or five teams, like, in the league right now, they could probably win the Super Bowl. Uh, and that's pretty much... Oh, it's Lano! Hey! Hey! It's, uh... Hey! No. hey. Fucking guy. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like I, I just have such a hard, bad taste in my mouth with, especially these uh, these late night hosts because it's like, I look at Fallon who sucks, and then I look at Leno like, over uh, Conan, so it's like, yeah, you know, yeah, Leno did screw over Conan so bad too when he was chosen as the heir apparent, and then all of a sudden it's oh, guess what? I think I'm coming back, dude. <laughs> exactly. Extra point attempt by the Cowboys. 7-6 bucks, and will this be a tie game? You bet it will. 7 all. 1 minute 35 seconds left. And NBC, as always, probably going to cut back to the Super Bowl. They're having a watch party outside of AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas right now. I've been down there back in about 10 years ago. Yeah, I was in Dallas uh 99. Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah, 98. Uh, yeah, 99. I was in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Jeez. It's a nice area. It's nice. I liked it down there. I love Texas. I have no issue down there in that state at all. I couldn't um, figure out what was missing the whole week I was down there. Then all of a sudden, it finally hit me the trees. There's no trees anywhere. <laughs> like, like where, where, uh, what is missing? <laughs> trees. <laughs> I went down there, and it was my uncle, my great uncle at the time. Uh, we go. We went down there, and my mother's just like, "Oh, I want to see San Antonio." So he's just like, "Oh, it's just up the road a piece." Fucking seven hours later, in yeah. a car, it's just we're driving seven hours to go to like San Antonio. Oh, it's uh, fuck face Goodell. Ed Sheeran laughing it up in his luxury box while counting his fucking money. Yeah, Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Ed Sheeran. Fucking ginger with all those guard with all those goddamn tattoos. <laughs> Looks like Eric Carver. I, I, I have, such an, I have such, I, I just, I don't like these hipster asshole singers sure. that like these girls just like swoon over. It's just like, oh, his song is just so emotional. It explains my love life. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. 
Like, Murphy, Bun- Murphy Bunting uh, ended up uh, being the one to get taken out of the game here, escorted to the back locker room. I, also, I, I have done good word from Ed Sheeran that hanging around with Taylor Swift and um, her, her large group of friends is never a bad thing. Oh, that I'll, that I'll agree with. Yeah. I understand that you get taken care of very well by her good friends. Well, I'm sure you do. <laughs> I mean, I, I, would, I wouldn't pass up a party with Taylor Swift and her friends. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, like, hey, you want to come up? Sure, I'll be right there. I'm coming over right now. <laughs> Stop the car. Stop the car. <laughs> I got my door. What the fuck did you just say, honey? It was it was an expression. It's my character. It's my character on the fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, Brady penalty action fake. Good pass rush there. Complete the Antonio Brown up the middle over past the fifty to the forty-five completion. I'm sounding more and more like Al Michaels as we go on here. Jeez. And now they're in midfield again. Yeah. To Antonio Brown. Plug on the play. God damn it. They're calling all these to Antonio Brown. I'm just sitting there and I'm like, motherfucker! Holding (laughs) offense. (laughs) Defensive penalty. Defensive penalty. Declined. Legal hands to the face. Declined. Yeah, because of the first, that large first down, yeah. Amazing how that flag was thrown as soon as they went through that two-point conversion against the Falcons in the Super Bowl, though. Did you notice that? Like, as soon as the, the play broke, it was like, flag right up in the air, just in case. <laughs> just kidding. All right. Ronald Jones again. 40 seconds left in the Brown first quarter. He wide open on that. Yeah, this is probably going to take us down to the end of the quarter here. But yeah, that'll probably be the last play of the uh, first quarter. Tight Going game. Seven after the first quarter. Yeah, tied up, uh, even game, but I'd say the advantage of momentum's going to the Buccaneers right now. I think Zeke has the most leaves that you can see in in Dallas with that hair. I agree. Like we were talking about how Dallas does not have any trees, oh, and I look at play Zeke's here. Hair. Yeah, that's a tree. Nope, almost stripped, incomplete. They should have just let that clock ride. Now they're gonna have to go for it on third down. Oh, they almost slapped the ball right out of his hands there. They almost got. That was, that was shades back to Super Bowl 52. Yeah, I know. That was a nightmare. Right over around that offensive lineman and then right for the slap. Slap! Suck roll. Slap! Your face slap! <laughs> Coffee! <laughs> slap! Coffee! Just play the goddamn... Like, just kneel yeah. for Christ's sake. Yeah, I know. They could have just run that clock down. Get the play in. All right. Yep. All right, final play of the quarter here. Brady, and he's looking for something. Big pass play, complete. Nope, inter- uh, might have been incomplete. So they go, they go from just running down the clock and starting the second quarter on second down to now starting the quarter off with a punt. Jeez. Yes. Maybe not the best of management of that because now no. it's like pretty much you're giving them a free down. You're pretty much yeah. giving them a free possession. Right. Looks like NBC and the uh, Buccaneers and Cowboys didn't coordinate the jersey colors too well because they had advertised for red jerseys and white jerseys tonight, and they got uh, blue jerseys and white jerseys. You know, I feel like the Buccaneers in red, Cowboys in white. You're watching the game. Eric is at the ballpark right now in Vegas. Minor league ball tonight. Taking in the action. Looks nice out there. Ah, good for Eric. Yep. I gotta get to you know I gotta get to a um, I gotta get to a baseball game. It's been a while. Yeah, I was gonna go to the Polar Park. You know, I was partnering going to Fenway a couple of weeks ago, but then, like every year, if I don't go by a certain time, football starts up, and then I just lose my interest in yeah. baseball. You know, it's just hard because it's just like you know you gotta take the train and then you're running back. Yeah, yeah it's just a pain in the ass. Right, exactly. There's too much uh, travel. I'll eventually get to Polar for a game. Yeah. Get the Coney dog. I, I went there. To, well, I went to the park. I've been in there. It's just the game got rained out. Oh, I but, see. Yeah, I ended up having a table talk uh, pie beer, actually. Ah, that was <laughs> pretty good. 
It was like lemon blueberry. Oh God, was it fucking good? Yep. I don't even drink that much anymore, but was it? It was good. Yep. I have it on good word that Elvira still looks pretty good. Oh, do you? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. She is. That that's one of those. Uh, she is. She is a lady that is forever in my heart. After like. <laughs> 30 years, it's like, you know what, honey? I don't even care. <laughs> honey, baby, ciao. <laughs> she, was in, uh, she, she was in Salem like a couple of years back, and she oh, was yeah. doing, um, they, they had, and it was around October, but they were doing like portraits of her. Like you could get your picture taken with her. It was like going to be like a portrait. It was like 150 bucks. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Invaded it because I'm just like, but Salem is a hike. That's like three. That's like two and a half hours for me. I don't know what I'm gonna do in life without Elvira. Like around, like she's always been like that staple of like the Halloween time every year. She's like, I miss like the horror hosts and everything like that too. That's one thing I miss about the 80s oh, and they, 90s. They brought, it, they brought it back now. They got Joe Bob Briggs. He's on uh, Shutter, which I'm a. Uh, he's he's back, I mean, but he's technically a relic. I'm talking about like new people. You know, not like the. Not like the, re- the relics, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, that kind of stuff. It's like I miss like. Well, like he's got a co-host, Darcy the male girl. She's pretty cute. Oh really? Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, isn't that with uh, what's her name from um, the Michael Douglas sequel to Wall Street? What? I'm thinking of some. I'm thinking of some other actress. Yeah, I think you're thinking you're something of some other actress. Okay. No, it's it. Her name is uh, D- Darcy, the male girl. She's never done anything else before. Mm. She's uh, she's been going to like AEW shows and that type of mm. stuff from like the beginning too. She's like a because Jericho has been on that show. It, it has made appearances with uh, Joe Bob hosting shows and that mm. type of stuff as well. So. Ah uh, yes, 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 uh, yes. Understood. What? Yeah. Understood. Darcy the, yeah, she, Darcy the male girl. Yes. Understood. <laughs> I understand. To quote Val Kilmer as Batman, I understand. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. I, I, I understand. I understand. You understand. You understand. That's funny. Oh yeah, sorry, yes, Joe yes, Bob Briggs yes. too. Yeah, oh, that's no, funny. Hell picture. Yeah, that you just sent yeah. over. Uh, yeah. right. <laughs> that would be a great. That would be a great Halloween treat on that one. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, uh, flagging the anyways, football, ladies and gentlemen, football. <laughs> yes. Yes. We we got a game to call here. <laughs> I think I derailed the show oh, because Mark has just yeah. has found out about Darcy the Bale Girl. Yeah, right, exactly. No comment. <laughs> All but right. Mark's going to be like, well, pay pays out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rodgers. Another Super Bowl for Rodgers or not, Dan? What's going on with them? Uh, the question is where he's going to be after this year. I mean, um, you know, because I don't know if he's going to be a, a Packer this year, after yeah. this year. What if he ends up um, winning a Super Bowl with the Packers after all the crap that went down? They got so much shit going on, though. You got, you got, yep. uh, they have so many disgruntled players right now on that team, uh, especially like Greg Jennings. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I think one of their linemen, one of the better ones, who's, I think he's on IR. He's going to be out half the season. Yeah. The big one that the, the, the the best, I, one of the better. I can't remember. If I can't name an offensive lineman, people don't fucking shoot me for yeah. it. Okay, like, seriously. Uh, there's only like three offensive linemen I think that people can name in the NFL right now, and one of them is Richie Incognito, and that's just <laughs> because the, the fucking insane person. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, so. Well, yeah. I know is that um, Billy's excited because they got Joe Thurney on the Chiefs. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty decent pickup. Nothing great that we'd write home about here, but I guess it touches up their team. Third and three, own 10 for the Cowboys. Handoff play is stuffed by Sue, and that play is dead. That is bad field position for the Cowboys. This is getting ugly. Two of those drives have started off deep in their own side of the field. 
Donica Sue is still playing at, at an elite level. Yeah. Whether he can help it or not, he's got so much size and strength that he uh, really can't be stopped. He was on. He was unreal in Detroit. Oh, he was. Yeah, he was just a complete threat. Oh, he's good in Madden too. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You can't go wrong with him. Absolutely not. Another punt here. Busy night for the punter so far. Looks like they're winding this thing down for a timeout. Punts. Delay a game, maybe. Delay of game, they're going to get pushed back all the way out to the end zone. Like, yep. break real deep. Right. Yeah, so it looks like they called uh, no time out there, so they took the delay. And that's going to go right to about midfield. They're going to go past midfield. To the 40, 35, 30. Wow, that's an, answer space. That's an automatic field goal range. Flag on the play, potential holding. That's too good to be true if you're the Buccaneers, though, if you get in that kind of field position. If you get that field position, that's pretty much you get free three points. Yep. Right, points. Holding, receiving team, 10 yard. Oh, wow. Well. Yep. There goes that. Yep, 45, though. <laughs> Pretty just going to make one pass. Yeah, all he needs is one first down. They're good. Yep. These Buccaneers fans are just not into it, though, huh? Like, we are. Like, I see them, and it's like, even when they scored that first touchdown, they all just kind of cheered. It was like, um, you know what? Do you know what type of uh, you, what type of things you can do in Tampa other than watch a fucking football game? Yeah. Like, they have so much other shit other than compared to, like, up here. Up here, it's like, we're miserable during this time of year because the weather, weather sucks, so the only thing that we really get is, like, the Patriots playing on Sunday once a week. Right. We get that little kind of breakup. Where Tampa, it's like, fucking Monday, you can go to the beach, and then the next, right. and then, is there are restaurants you can literally go and eat right on the beach. Right. You know, it, it's just, it, it's a wonderful area. Right. Um, it just does not like to support a major sports team unless you have Tom Brady. Cause then it's just like, well, Brady. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I'm around here. It's just miserable. Like I'm, I've been doing a lot of walking lately and it's like, I'm sitting here now and it's like, I got two months of like good walking left, maybe like mid November at best. And then that's it for like three months. You know, I, I swear we all put on two to five pounds that we probably, we probably going to lose an additional two to five pounds a year, if not for winter. Of, like, sound weight. No, you just spend so much time sitting around your house all winter, you know, and it's like, really, the only exercise you get is if you go to the gym or playing sports or if you're doing some snow shoveling, you know? That's about it. Yeah, but you can't get out there and be active all day. Then your back and shoulders are deteriorating, deteriorating at a record rate because of the shoveling. Yeah. Oh, it's really too bad. It's one thing I hate. I hate, I hate it when it gets dark early out, too. I can't stand that every year. I said I tend to get a little bit yeah, miserable like for a while hours. after that happens. Like, the extra sleep is good and all, but after a while, it's just like, no, no. <laughs> no matrix. So I heard, uh, yeah. I, I heard that uh, the new, uh, there, there was a rumor that the new Halloween is going to be on Peacock. For purchase or for free of charge? I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't know if it's going to be for free or for purchase. Like, it yeah. hasn't been decided yet. Yeah. But that, I heard that rumor kicking around. Yeah. So that'll be, I mean, <clears throat> some people are more excited for the new Spider-Man movie, <laughs> while Mark and I are still <laughs> are, are, yeah. uh, or while Mark and I are sitting here just being like, we just need Ghostbusters Afterlife yeah. to fucking come out. Of I kind of turned on Afterlife just a little bit since the Matrix came out. I'm kind of going in Matrix mode. Instead. Yeah, I'm no, just, I understand. You know, it's, I like, know. it's like the day that's never going to come, and it's like it's hard to keep getting like excited like this. I mean, it's like, geez, you know. I mean, you know, the thing about it is, is that we have to lower our expectations enough 
So that way we could just be like, when it finally comes out, we could be like, it's here! It's finally oh, here! The last move was strategic, but then the news comes out internationally that they're moving it back. It's like ridiculous. Oh, yeah. my goodness. I mean, they do that shit all the time, though. Yeah. Like, internationalized. I mean, there are yeah. times that they've had to wait for yeah. so effing long for films and that type of stuff. So who knows? Second and eight, Brady I mean, and Gronk. Complete. The marketing is there because they have all this stuff coming out. So I'm yeah. thinking that, like, that it's gonna be it's gonna be sooner rather than later. Yeah. Brady to Gronk on second and eight, close to a first down, but about two yards shy. Still a little bit out of third and three, actually. So they're a little shy of field goal range here. Brady just sticking to what he knows with the slant passes, keeping everything short underneath. They got not the taking many. They don't get this first down. That's complete. Godwin going into the 30, 25, out of bounds at about the 23. Godwin had no one on him for about five years. Might be a late hit out of bounds. That could, that could be holding on the offense. Yeah, it was a late flag, though. That's true. Could be holding downfield as the play was. Could have been someone blocking for Godwin and they held. Goodell wants us to... Make sure the the Patriots uh, make sure the Buccaneers win. Yeah. Okay. So we'll come up with some bullshit. Give them ten yards. <laughs> yeah. Ten yards, please, for the Bucks. Ezekiel, I can't believe you're allowed to play with nose rings in the NFL like that. I would just rip the shit out. He looks like he would rather be anywhere else. Yep. <laughs> yep. He's like, ah, I don't want to be here. Must be nice Meanwhile, to play. Meanwhile, guys like us, I'd be like, oh, fuck, it's the NFL. I'm ready, yeah. Yeah. Must be nice to uh, play in the NFL and, or any pro, pro sport, for that matter, to make this kind of money. Maybe it's a hit elite hit out of bounds. Helmet the helmet. Yep. Helmet the helmet. They called it on the offense. Yeah, he his helmet. That's true. Holding offense. Penalties offset. Holding on the offense. And then a helmet and the helmet. Foul. Jeez. Brady was talking about what the hell did you do? Why did you do it? I'd be like, yeah. Yeah, fucking goddamn thing. Oh, yeah. God. Right in front of the referee, too. There was some fighting there, scruff there between Jensen. Oh, and Watkins. He's looking at him like, hey, just call him. He hit me in the face. Yeah. He slapped me in the face. Slap. He slapped. All right. 25-yard line. Brady, handoff. Play action. Drops back. Passes. Godwin. So the receivers are doing a good job here for the Patriots. Uh, not the Patriots. The Buccaneers. Yeah, it's, it, isn't I, it such a different experience a, watching Brady on a different team, though? It's so bizarre. It's like you're used to always rooting for him as your own, you know, your, your own team's success relies on his success. Now it's just like we're just kind of watching Brady casually here. Hey. Yeah, except not casually because now it's just like bitter hatred. Yeah. Now we know how Bridget Moynihan felt. Yeah. <laughs> Bridget Moynihan! <laughs> it's Bridget! She had my first kid, yay! That's great. That's good. That's great. Yay. That's the way Brady used to act when he was younger. Remember that? That's good. Yeah. That's great. That's, That's awesome. awesome. That's it. That's when it. He's in the tunnel, you know, when he's in the tunnel at Super Bowl 36 and he's just... <laughs> yeah, I get to hear it. Oh, yay. Yeah, he used to act like that when he was younger. Not anymore, though. Now he's just really serious yeah. all the time. Heaps of people like, ah! Told you I'd get you here! Calm the hell down, Tom. Calm down. Play action. Brady looks to Gronk. Comes off. down. Oh, boy. Brady Gronk. Gronk spike. And there we go. Another Brady to Gronk touchdown. Ugh. They shoot the cannons off. Yep. Patriots with their little musket sticks they had. Yeah, muskets are better. And the fans go mild. 
Bernie's picking a new team. He's like, what team has the th thing most close to muskets? We have cannons. Sold. <laughs> Sold. I never made that connection before. All right. We have musket. We have cannons. Pirate cannons. Do you have a pirate ship? We have a pirate ship. Sign in in Tampa Bay, then. There we go. Extra point is good. 14 to 7. Tampa bay -o. I was still impressed the fact that uh, and I, you kind of got to give a little bit of respect to Belichick and the fact of that Kronk wanted to go to Tampa and Belichick traded him to Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> like, go to Cleveland. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> but he was like, all right, fine. You want to go to Tampa. I'll, say I'll tell you where you're going. You're going to Cleveland, man. I'm not going to Cleveland. Then play for the Patriots. Jeez. I'll just stay retired. I hosted WrestleMania this year. What's that? <laughs> you did, yeah. Uh, some of the people still cheer yeah, for them. I hosted WrestleMania last year, and then all of a sudden, like three months later, I'm going back to the pay I'm going back to the NFL. Uh, yeah. Okay. LeBron James tweeting out love for Brady tonight. LeBron and Brady are just like, we're kind of like each other, aren't we? We've won a lot. Brady's like, well, I've won a lot more than you, LeBron, let's be fair. Yes, I've won a lot more. I can only imagine what it's like to have lost the NBA championship that many times. My goodness. Jeez. Brady, Brady just looks at LeBron and is just like, well, you see, unlike me, I've actually, unlike you, I've actually passed Jordan in championships. <laughs> yeah, right. And I only matched him. I passed him. Not only matched yeah. him, passed him. Jeez. And even if you do match him, you wouldn't have not have done it with one team like me and Jordan did. So we did six with the team. So uh, I can understand why Brady probably got sick of Belichick, though, because it's, it's always like the serious crap. Like I had imagine like a guy like Mac Jones is coming in and can appreciate it, you know, which is probably a better situation for the Patriots. But. I mean, after a while, you're 40-something years old, and you're going to listen to Belichick all the time. It's just like, I don't want to listen to this old man anymore, you know? Plus, it's like, you know, it, we've seen Brady in a new light because he's actually been able to do commercials. He's able to do, like, you know, where before I think, eh, you know, it, it's just, it was a marriage, you know? They were together, and then at yeah. one point, they were just like, fuck this. Like, this is... You know, I, I think it was a little bit of both. I think Brady, I think Brady was like, I want to move on. And Belichick was just like, I need to move on. Yeah. Well, I think the thing too, is that with the Patriots are all about having like no stars, you know, nobody's bigger than the team. Right. And then, you know, Brady just became such a mega star. It was like, well, it kind of broke what the idea was that when they went to Super Bowl 36, Brady was a total no name. Even when I went to Super Bowl 38, Brady was only so popular, you know, then he just kind of exploded after the first two. You know, and then after that, it was just like Brady the Superstar. And it just got, seemed to get bigger and bigger with this last, you know, especially from 07 on, it just got bigger and bigger. And, you know, they've just kind of gone with it, you know, as opposed to him just being like a, a moderate player. And Belichick's just more about having hung, humble players. And Mac, that's why Mac Jones is going to be a great fit for the New England Patriots. Because, um, you know, he's just going to be this humble kid that's going to run the plays and respect the system and the organization and Belichick. And, you know, he's right for the team. So he's going to have a good, he's going to have a good rookie season. People are going to be shocked when they yeah, see him play. I'm confident with Mac Jones. Yeah. My, uh, my favorite Belichick Brady moment, I think was, was after Super Bowl. Sorry. it was after Super Bowl 51. Um, Brady is like, in the center of the field and he's crying because number one, he just led a team back to a 25 point comeback. And then, you know, all the stuff that had gone on that season with the four game suspension, his mom had battled uh, sickness and that type of stuff. Um, my favorite moment was the crowd, like uh, crowd of media is just surrounding him. I forget. I don't know if it was LeGarrette Blount or if it was Edelman. LeGarrette Blount. It was LeGarrette Blount. Yep. You're and the greatest. Belichick, Belichick just fought through the whole every yes. single media guy to find him. Yeah, and they just hugged. Yeah, and like it was just that moment of just like there were like at one point I when I first saw the clip I almost like it was one of those things I was just like ah, I got something in my eye. Uh, that, you know, like, Blunt's like you're the greatest. 
you the fucking greatest. Then he's like, that. <laughs> then he's like, that all said, I'm gonna beat y'all motherfuckers in the Super Bowl next year. <laughs> then he did. Look at you're the greatest. Even though I fumbled the ball in the first quarter, yeah. you're the greatest. Yeah, you're the greatest. And you're the greatest. I remember Folger and Maz going off about that. Like, this idiot almost cost him the Super Bowl, and he's out there celebrating with them at the end. <laughs> you're the greatest. They would not run him confidently in the Super Bowls. Then he's playing for the Eagles against the Patriots, and he's running all over the Patriots like he's Adrian Peterson or something. You know, it was nuts. Dak yeah. Prescott throws the ball out of bounds. 14-7. Just under nine minutes left in the second quarter here. Tampa Bay uh, defense... Uh, Struggling just a little bit here. Doing okay. They're, they're moder- performing moderately, but the uh, Cowboys are starting to get some momentum going. This is usually where the Cowboys tend to fall apart, though, is somewhere within that second to third quarter. If they somehow survive the first quarter, that is, uh, that's a complete pass. Actually, that's only one foot down. Caught the ball one foot down. Maybe his right foot toe tapped. The challenge is out now. Mm, yeah, that... That that looked incomplete to me. The concern is that I think that the right foot tapped as soon as he caught the ball, then the left foot yeah. touched. So that would be a completion. But if that right foot didn't come down, of course, then it's it's an incomplete and it's coming back. Hey, Tony Romo, I remember him. He never won the Super Bowl, did he? <laughs> I'm America's quarterback. America's quarterback. I play for the Dallas Cowboys. I smile bright and I date Jessica Simpson. I'm America's quarterback. All right, yeah. America's America's quarterback. I I I liked Romo. Did you? I, I'm I didn't hear that. I, I, what? I said, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> well, he was undrafted. I mean, it was yeah. a good story. I mean, you know, like he he was good for your fantasy team. Like I, I, just, I had him on fantasy one year. Yeah. I, had him, I had him and T.O. actually the same year they were on the Cowboys together in 08. Yeah. Oh! T.O. Wow! Wow! Still remember that. Like that, doing that sports now. It was right before Super Bowl 39. And you're just like, T.O. Oh. T.O. Wow! Wow! God. Yeah. Oh. He had a good Super Bowl against us too, in spite of being hurt. Can you imagine if T.O. Yeah, was 100%? Are... Well, can you imagine if the Patriots had Ty Law on the field? Yeah, exactly. But you didn't think of that, did you? You'd think after uh, the coronavirus and COVID that you you wouldn't want to do Corona beer commercials after that. <laughs> like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> corona. It's like the Corona Alcohol Company said, can we just change that name to its more scientific-based term, COVID? Yes. Of course. COVID beer. Uh... Commercial break. Game about to come back here. Challenge is still out, so we'll see what's going to happen here. Into this game. It's hard to find. It's hard to believe the NFL's back, but it is. Like, did they get Bruce Campbell for AP Bio? I might have to check that shit out. <laughs> there to get Dennis from. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. I gotta. Yep. I gotta see that. Yeah. I'm trying to get more into television shows now. I ended up watching. Um, for anybody, uh, and I told Mark about this last weekend, but for anybody out there, if you have not seen the show Yellowstone, I strongly suggest you start watching it. It is on Peacock, uh, starring the incomparable Kevin Costner. Uh, it took me a long time to get to be able to say that I actually like Kevin Costner and things other than baseball movies. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I kind of held a grudge against Kevin Costner for the longest time, mostly because of uh, Dances with Wolves. Oh, jeez. Because... That one best picture and best director the same year that Goodfellas was nominated. Yeah. And it was like, you mean to tell me this fucking four hour tub of shit won the over fucking Goodfellas? Yeah. Uh, so that challenge came back. The completion was good. And the um, Cowboys have just got a first down. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, even Costner, I, I only liked them in Robin Hood really when I was a kid. And then JFK later on. That was about it. Now it's like, you know, he's made a lot of movies like The Guardian and a few others. Man of Steel that were pretty good. So, Yeah, no, he's, he's, uh, I, and of course the baseball films like Bull Durham and like yeah. Build the Dreams and uh, the For the Love of the, the Tigers. Game. Yeah, For the Love of the Game. That's a good one. 
Well, the game was good. Yeah. Like I, I really like that flick. Um, I think I saw that with my folks actually, and I didn't know it was like a romantic, like a, oh, like a yeah. romance. Yeah. Like, what is this shit? Yeah. What I mean, the the <laughs> That's what you call a '90s date movie: sports for the guys, romance for the ladies. Jerry uh, Maguire. Jerry Maguire. God. Flag on the play here. Bruce Arians looks like he's ready to... The guy's blood pressure must be through the roof. It looks like he's boiling. That's why he had to retire at one point. Yeah. He actually looks healthier now because there was yeah. a couple of years ago where it was like, Jesus Christ, stop eating. But <laughs> Holding. Defense. He actually looks sick, to be quite honest. Yeah. probably stopped eating all that cheese in Green Bay and now he's just yeah. like I'll just I'll just go with a meat diet here in fucking yeah. Texas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they got all you can eat meat. I'll take the uh shrimp uh po boy. <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, I'll I'll get the surf and turf. Yeah. Uh the steak. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you one of the most depressing things about living in New England is when all the uh, surf and turf places start to shut down right after the summer ends. It's like everyone's ready to just like move right into fall as soon as uh Labor Day hits. It's like August thirty first. Okay, bye everybody. It's like, oh jeez, they lose well, their college kids. Well, I was early anyways because of staffing shortages and yeah. they couldn't get food because right. of what's been going on in the world. And yeah. it's just, like it is. It, it's just a fucking madhouse lately. Yeah. Like nobody can get anything for any yeah. for like you're paying more for food. You're paying less shit. Like it's just yeah. I, I feel bad if you want a restaurant. It's just a nightmare right now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Glad I never did that. Pondered it in the past. No. Like, I just I, restaurants are too difficult to run. That's the problem. That's why I've never done it. The more and more I read about it, it's just there's too many variables. There's too many people that come and then have a bad experience just one time and never come back because of that. Yeah. And that's the problem. And it's not the fault. You're, you're you can have the best menu on the planet, but if your cook fucks up. Yeah, or your wait staff screws up, or your bartender's an right. asshole. You're fucked. Yeah. So, you know, and that could just be one. Like they could just have a bad night. This is why people people always say, "Oh, do what you love for work." No, just do what you need to no. do to make money. Fuck doing what you love exactly. for work. Exactly. Are you fucking kidding me? It's like here all the time. I, I want to do what I love. Well, I love to cook. Years. I did what I love for three years, and the last six months was a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Just constant stress. Doing what you love makes you love hate what you love. That's what that does, you know. Even yeah, CM Punk, it, yeah. even CM Punk, he hated wrestling for years because of his experiences in WWE. <laughs> yeah, you know? remember he wasn't a wrestler then; he was a sports entertainer. Sports entertainer, exactly. Yeah, he loved wrestling. Yeah. Field goal attempt. Greg Zerline coming up for the Cowboys, trailing by seven here, but they're going to try to chip that down to a four-point deficit. 31 attempt, yard attempt, and that is wide left from 31 yards, you oh, asshole. Oh, boy. I'm telling you, they should just, like, beat him with soap bars for that one, shanking the thing oh, like that. Oh, God. Against Tom Brady, of all people, too. Shanks it left. Aaron's is like, all of a sudden, his blood pressure goes down to, like, nothing after that. He's like, <laughs> I'm back, I'm back, I'm back to normal now. Thank you, thank you, everyone. I'm good now, I'm good. Jeez. Just, he didn't even do anything, and he puts his hand up like, well, he did it. It's like he didn't even do anything. The guy fucked up. To be a field goal kicker and to miss field goals like that, to me, it's just a slap across the face of your entire team, in my opinion. You do all that work. Quest of 98 fucking Vikings. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, we're going to the Super Bowl. I mean, the Vikings had the uh, Falcons beat, and they had the uh, Saints beat. Yep. The NFC Championships, and they lost both times. It's like, dudes. Yeah. Let's get this that together. 98 team, that 98 team, for crying out loud, I mean, you had Chris Carter, who's a favorite, and then you have maybe the greatest wide receiver of all time in his, like, rookie year, and that was, like, right after that Thanksgiving game where people still talk about that Thanksgiving day against the Cowboys, yeah. where he just lit, lit everybody up. FUBU TV poll. Will Tampa Bay repeat as Super Bowl champions? I voted no. NFC cha uh, the poll says 82% say they will not repeat. 18% yes. Yeah, that's fair. 
eighteen percent is just the twenty two players, the twenty two starters that returned. Yeah, for a <laughs> pretty damn much. My goodness, it's too interesting. It's too much. It's too early for Super Bowl talk, especially with an extra game now. You don't know what's really going to happen with injuries, anything like that. So it's too early to. Um, it's too early there's to too jump. many teams that, had tr- that turned over. I mean, yeah. you know, like there's, the Patriots had to re- kind of rebuild. Their, you know, they have a rookie quarterback. You know, the Jets have a rookie quarterback again. Uh, but, you know, because they're in the midst of their 15th rebuild this decade. Yeah. Uh, and then you have, you know, the Bears got a, new, a rookie quarterback. Uh, you know, and it's just the, there's a lot of teams that. You know, you wonder about Miami. Is Miami going to be as good as they were last year? Because last year they were really – they showed some pr- progress, especially under Brian, Brian Flores. But uh, it's – um, you know, it, it, but then the Rams are different now because they got a good, they actually have a good quarterback. So, I mean, with Stafford, I mean, with that defense, it's a good combination where you have the number two best player in the NFL with uh, Aaron Donald as your defender. And now you got Matthew Stafford. You have a, you know, so the Rams can be back in the Super Bowl for all we know. Right. Yeah, no, I know. I think the Rams are one of my favorites to be there this year. Uh, Cowboys recover the ball here. Oh, and they shit. do. Oh, boy. Now they're going to do the victory lap here. See, this, this is where getting the, see, this is the problem with sports, too, is that when you miss that field goal, then your defense comes up with something like this. Now you're trying to take the lead as opposed to trying to tie the game again. Yeah. You know what I mean? And look at that. They got right through that offensive line, were able to strip the ball out of Jones's hands, and they just had a whole wealth of Cowboys defenders on the ground for that ball. They all Jones just screamed out right now, probably from Brady. What the fuck? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice recovery there. Right on top of it. Popped it right out. That's rough, too, for the Cowboys because they could be down four points instead of seven. That's where those field goals come back to just bite you in the ass. All right, well, they we tie it up here. I mean, yeah, but then if you tie it up, you could have had a lead, you know? could have had a lead, right. Yeah. Six minutes to go. Inside the 25 now. Gregory, he's a big guy, too. Look at the size of him. Wow. Jeez. Athletic too. Zeke, Zeke really fought for that for that yardage. Yep. They got talent all over that defensive line. Pierre Paul, Sue's uh, Via. You know, it's just nuts. I think Levante David out of the. Uh... Is Ezekiel Elliott as I mean, good as they make him out to be, though, or do you think he's kind of like maybe because of injuries and things, maybe never lived up to I mean, some? He's of... a dual threat. I mean, he can catch yeah. and he can run. I mean, that's yeah. that, in my opinion. But the problem is with a with a running back is is that after like year four or five, you know, the mileage starts to add up. Yeah, well, you, like, you, like, you, you very... just, see what just happened on this play there? How Zeke went out for a pass reception, yeah. and then Dak Prescott didn't even check to see if he was there and decided to fire the ball deep and risk being intercepted. That's bad quarterbacking right there. Yeah, that was a. Um... That, that was uh, you. You want to go with what they give you and not try to go f- over the top, you know. Like I've playing Madden all these years, I've gotten so yeah. good at oh, yeah. defenses. It's crazy, isn't it? Like I, I just know like single coverage. It's just like okay, I'm going to you. Yep. Like and I know where the the, the safeties and the linebackers. I can read them very easily now. Where I could be like, okay, I know what I can get. Yep. You know, I know at least I can get five or six on this play. And I'm not going to be able to go over the top because he's going to be double or triple covered. Right. Of course, though, if you have Julio Jones, it's like, yeah, I could. <laughs> <laughs> I throw deep to him every so often, too. I won the Super Bowl with Jalen Hurts last year. But also my defense was like Khalil Mack and Aaron Donald and yeah. Julio Jones is a receiver. So I was kind of like stacked. It was a fantasy drafted team. Then I made some moves. But, uh, oh, yeah, it was like. Julian Jalen Hurts was the quarterback, but I got I ended up trading for him. I had Jared Stidham originally, but I made some moves and right. got Jalen, just upgraded the Jalen Hurts from Stidham, which was a good move. All right, here we go. Third down and eight, and Cowboys need this one. Pass rush complete, and he gets dragged down by his ankle. Does Wilson? My goodness, crowd ball. <laughs> Jim Ross here. None of these teams are as good as the Oklahoma Sooners. 
Playing at, playing at Utah State. Yeah. Where's Utah State? Playing for Coach Saskatoon. Play, play for the old, uh, play for the old ball coach, Saskatoon. Yep. Bruce I... Arians loves a cocktail once in a while. <laughs> All right. 11 yard line. I'd love to Play action, game. run by Dak They're Prescott brought. here. He's going, going out at the four. Gets to take a good look at one of the cheerleaders over there. I mean, that's... Oh, hi. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Two greatest hey, cheerleaders good. in NFL history. Number one, Baltimore Ravens, Stacey Keebler. Number two, Leah Van Dale, New England Patriots, better known as Carmella. Top two cheerleaders of all time. Meanwhile, every Dallas Cowboy. Look at Chunk. Look at you. Like, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. Paul Abdul is also like, uh, I was a Laker girl yeah. way before fucking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fumble yeah. there. Dak Prescott's going to throw it in the end zone. Touchdown. To, uh, there you go. Cooper. Nice recovery. I thought I drafted Cooper in fantasy. I guess not. Jones is all upset now. He's down there like. You know the way it is in Patriots world, you usually get sat for the game now after a fumble like that. They make you sit there. Like, Belichick doesn't give you the opportunity to go out there and redeem yourself. you got to sit there and live with it for the next three fucking weeks of your life. Well, that's what he did with Blunt in the fucking Super Bowl. Yeah. Because, yeah, he pretty much is just like, we're going to James White. <laughs> yeah. Pass the White! Touchdown! <laughs> Look at he's crying now. He's crying. Yeah. Oh, God. It's amazing these teams don't have, like, the seat of shame on the sidelines where it's like, ah, you, you will sit in the crazy. seat of shame. <laughs> oh, he almost. Oh, he fucked the extra point up. He did. Oh, wonderful. Oh, that's dumb hey, kicker. He was a pretty good kicker for the Rams, too. What a ridiculous. Was this guy getting paid or what? The Cowboys fans right now are ready to kill themselves. Like, oh, it's oh, going to be a long year. Unbelievable. There's nothing worse. Like, there's nothing worse than having a kicker that just, like, that you can't count on. Oh, yeah, no, not at all. Terry. Yeah. Terry was, like, automatic. And then they had Gostowski, and it was like, Ugh. Yep. Well, you do all that work, and it's like, then the guys, then you guys missed four. That's four points now off the board. You know, you're talking about 17, 14 lead now. If that guy's yeah. making those plays, you know, making those kicks, it's just absolutely insane. It's a momentum swing. And yeah, that, it is. And it's just, you know, and now it's like if you want to, if you score another touchdown, you have to think about going for two, like, later on, which then, and going for two is not easy. So you just, ah, it's just such a pain in the ass. Oh, it sucks. Making sure I don't have a tick here on my leg. Uh, it looks like it's just blood. Blood. Uh, yeah, it almost like I got bit by a mosquito or something the other day. I was like, oh, that seems awfully, that scab seemed awfully solid to me. I'm like, that better not be an effing tick in there. <laughs> Jeez. Can't believe how fast time's gone by the past couple of years, man. It's like all of a sudden it's like fall. It's like it's almost 2022. It's like, geez. Well, you think about it, you know, it's just, it's amazing that, like, how shit has just gone, especially in the last three or four years. I and mean, when we started this program, AEW was just like this startup organization. Yeah. And now they're completely the leader in pro wrestling right now in the United States, maybe the world, uh, for that matter. And then um, you, you have... Uh, and then you have Brady leaving the Patriots and winning a Super Bowl in Tampa Bay. Yep. Uh, you know, it's just all this, all this stuff is just shaped like co completely different in the last four or five years where you're just sitting there and you're like, is this really fucking happening? What, oh, what absolutely. The fuck? Absolutely. What's crazy about Brady is that he left, he joined, he, like when he became the Patriots starter and stopped being the Patriots starter, he, um, he did it under create like uncommon circumstances in the in the world. Like when he became the starter, it was after nine eleven, and then when he left, it was just around the time COVID nineteen was breaking out. And those were like two like landmark crazy events, you know. 
He announced he was leaving the day he announced he was leaving on St. Patrick's Day in Boston oh. when the things were closed. Unreal. It was like, you motherfucker. Yep. We want to go home and drink our sorrows away. We can't. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, intercepted. I saw that coming. I saw that coming. Wow. That was a deflection wow, a into an interception. Dunk. Yep. See, this is... Lame. To, to double down on what I've been saying, your kickers missed a field goal, and then you get the fumble recovery. Then you get a touchdown. Then you miss the extra point. Then you get an interception. So now you've missed a field goal and an extra point. It could be 17-14 with the ball off a deflected interception right now. Oh, boy. He did, oh, it's on the receiver, really. See, that should be called... This is why I argue for an, something called... There should be two forms of interceptions in the NFL, direct and indirect. And they should affect your passer rating differently. Well, that, I think with next-gen stats, that should be a thing. Because yeah. next-gen stats are coming the new things, like their analytics, so... Like an indirect pass. It's like an. It should be like, it's like a pitcher getting charged for a run when it really was due to an error. You know, it's like... That you know, you should have that kind of thing in bat football too. You're you're throwing a pass and the receiver fumbles the thing and knocks it up in the air for a corner to cough it up. You know, why is that why is that a mark against the quarterback when really it's the receiver's hands that caused that intercept? You know what I'm saying? It's like it should be direct and indirect. I mean like that and Brady threw a lot of those in New England where he'd throw the ball and the ball would just get popped up in the air and you know, boom, intercepted. But the Cowboys defense Fumble recovery and an interception, and their kicker is really screwing them right now because if they had those four extra points, the extra point, the they field probably... goal, and a touchdown here, which they might have just missed getting just there, you know, you're looking at a 24 to 14 game. Ooh. Yep. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting it's, play it's, now. It is, it is fun to watch, to watch the NFL again. Like, it is fun it is. to have football. Like, it is. It's one of the most watchable, like, easy to watch sports. All right, third and six. Three minutes to go. Three and a half minutes to go. And the uh, three minutes, 26 seconds to go. Break, no, Dak Prescott batted down by, it looks like, Levante David. Slap that right down. Now their great kicker comes out again for the Cowboys, which the Buccaneers shouldn't be too unhappy about. What are they going to go for now? See, they're kick if they have to go for it on fourth down because of their kicker, their kicker is forcing them into shit they don't have to be in right now. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure Jones is telling McCarthy, no, no, don't send him out there. <laughs> Dick Jones runs OCP. <laughs> now, you're not supposed to take your helmet off on the field like that. That's usually a penalty. Okay, here comes... It's, it's, I was watching... Uh, I just saw that Joe had commented. He's just like... I'm, oh, oh, it. oh, he just made it. Oh, go ahead, Dan. I, I just noticed Joe had commented. He just said that uh, you can't let the Cowboys win this game because then they're going to think they're going to win the Super Bowl after week one. Well, they already think they're going to win the Super Bowl before week one and, uh, already. Exactly. So they, what's the point? Yeah. Here, Joe. They're preseason they, champions. Every, they're like the Detroit Lions. They win the Super Bowl in the preseason every year. Exactly. Oh, football films. Friday Night Lights. The Express, which I've never seen The Express, actually. Yeah, Friday Night Lights is good. And then, of course, what uh, Leatherheads. That was actually all right. Yeah. With Clooney? Decent. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, Any Given Sunday, which is probably one of my favorite sports movies of all time. Yeah, that's a good movie. I think that they should make more pro-based movies in fictional leagues like that. The Pantheon Cup, whatever the hell they called it. <laughs> uh, that was that character. Really that character Cameron Diaz played was like the prototype for Stephanie McMahon's later oh, character. Like right after that, she was like Cameron Diaz and any given Sunday for years. I and Pacino was playing Belichick. Yeah, like, before Belichick. Just, actually, it was more like Parcells. Let's be quite honest. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 I'm a coach. I'm a coach. Just 
Well, actually, it was it was uh, Parcells because he wasn't getting along with ownership. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Actually, that is true. Then he ends up going to the expansion team and he takes Steeman Willie Beeman with him at the end. That was a hilarious ending. Good, Good return. They're going to start now about the forty-five yard line. Yeah, so their own forty-five. Oh, he's trying to list the players that won a lot of titles in a lot of sports. Crazy. Bill Russell won 11 titles in, like, a league with, like, five teams. Henry Ricard. Henri Ricard, excuse me, and then Bill Russell. Yeah. Oh, that Bucks bring on Brady's finger looks terrible. Of course, it's, it, it's, of course it's a tip, piece of jewelry from Tampa because it just looks like something a fucking stripper would wear. I actually, this morning, believe it or not, completely forgot Brady won the Super Bowl seven times. Cause it's just ingrained that we've won six times as a Patriot. No. Yeah, like this morning, I'm like, oh, he won seven. That's right. It's just because my mind just won't accept it. It just won't accept it. There was one time we were talking and you made that comment. He's won seven, not six. And I'm like, yeah. Brady all day airs it out and caught Antonio Brown. Big time pass and a touchdown, and the Buccaneers are going to regain the lead oh, in what is a shootout. Secondary got burned on that play. 38 seconds of playing time, two plays, 57 yards. Yeah, you know, it's, it's great watching Antonio Brown catching touchdowns when the Patriots had him two fucking years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, no controversy about Antonio Brown down in Tampa Bay, though. Yeah, there's nothing. He's fine. Model fucking citizen down there. No one's got to complain yeah. about nothing. Yeah. It looks like Arians is loving coaching Brady, though. He's like, I love coaching Brady. <laughs> he doesn't really show it, but yeah, you can tell. Oh, they got burned there. Absolutely burned. That's why it pays to have Tom Brady as your quarterback. Because he can come back from stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. He must have beat him off the line, and he did. Yep, he did a, he did a fake. He must have like a, a hesitation step. And the corner bought it completely. And then he gained that space. So that's really uh, Brown really made that happen. And then Brady just put that ball right on the spot. And the touchdown. Roethlisberger is going to be watching this and while eating three fucking pints of ice cream and just being like, ah, for fuck's sake. How nervous were you going into Super Bowl 45 when Ben Roethlisberger had two Super Bowls and was getting ready to tie Brady with three Super Bowls going into that game? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. People forget that Roethlisberger was almost tied in Super Bowls with Brady at one point. I know. Yeah, and I know. I'm, uh, I'm still kind of pissed he broke his youngest quarterback to ever win the Super Bowl record because Brady could have the youngest and the oldest records. Yeah, that, that's true. But at the same time, he also here's a little caveat that he that he had the lowest QB rating for a winning quarterback ever. Forty. Uh, he played like shit in forty. Yeah. The only reason he won was because of well the referees. Yep. And also his defense. Diligent and, officiating. Yeah. <laughs> diligent. <laughs> yeah. Almost Fucking ten o'clock. Should have two championships. Yeah. Almost at 10 o'clock here on the East Coast. I had a 2010 game against the Packers. Hippie Brady. Look at the long hair on it. Look at the locks on Tom Brady back then. That was a good Patriots team, too. They 14 and 2. Yeah. No, I, I love the 2010 team. Yep. Stop releasing the ball so damn quick, yeah. Amazing how Brady finds ways to improve. Nice reception there. Mari Cooper, 2 minutes 30 seconds left. Dallas Cowboys have all three of their timeouts. So they're really in no desperate situation here. They're down five. They will get the ball first at the start of the second half. So any kind of points that they can get here will be uh, money. Well, wow, it sounds like me and Madden. <laughs> yeah. I want, the game, I want the ball with two minutes left, yep. and then I want the ball to start the half. Yep, that's <laughs> always the best. Like, there's been games where I've been down like 10 to 14 points in Madden, and just because I get the ball at the end of the half and start of the half, it's like I'll be down like 14 points, and I'll sit there, and my mind will go, we're getting killed, and my mind will go, we still get the, well, all we need to do is get the last score of the half and the first score of the next half, and we should be good. And I'll come down at the end of the half, touchdown, start of the half, touchdown, I'll and the lead's are right. And just... I'll just use slant routes and just get everybody out of bounds, create my own create my own timeouts. Yep. 
Didn't, you know, I, didn't I, I come back from like 35 points down once? Didn't I send you a clip last year where I was down like yeah, was pretty, 31 was points? Pretty ridiculous. I was down yeah. like 31 to 3 or something, and I ended up winning. I, I just, I, I, well, a couple things. I just kind of worked the clock. So what I just kept doing was like, okay, I'm just going to get down the field and score a touchdown. And then just a bunch of things just went my way, and I think I might have even got the onside kick. It was just nuts. I wish I had that game on tape. It was crazy. Like, I was outrageously down. I think, that, I think that's probably the biggest comeback I've ever had. And I just started restructuring my, the way I was running my defensive plays and everything. And I just, well, I went down, like, kind of flukishly, too. It was like some things that happened early that just kind of didn't go my way. And I'm like, I'm really down this much. And I don't rage quit. Like, I don't rage quit at all. I'll sit there. I'll get the living shit beat out of me. I mean, there was times I was down 19 in NBA 2K and came back and won. Because I don't rage quit. You know, what I try to do is I try to cut the lead down to start, you know. So I try to just cut it down. And then I've, I've had some crazy comebacks. But a lot of people, they just rage quit. They just give up. I don't give up. I'll, I'll sit there and play it all the way down to the bitter end. I don't care. In fact, I almost prefer those situations. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is fun. I'm down 31 to 3. All right. So I'm like, let's get this. You know, here. Okay. Boom. I think I had like a big pick six. I think it was the Chargers game, actually. It was the Chargers with Jalen Hurts. I had that big pick six. Oh, that was the game. That was the game where I had, like, the interception. And, oh, no, I remember that game. Now, it was that Chargers game. And I had, like, that massive interception there. And it was, like, it was like, you know, like the last two minutes of the game or something. And, like, wildly came all the way back and won. It was just absolute madness. I think I did. I wonder I how many Signed up for Peacocks, and I knowing that the NFL yeah. was going to you're going to watch NFL games on it. Sorry to interrupt you. I no, just sorry. Easy. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Peacock, not too expensive. Five bucks a month. Yeah. Then, of course, WWE will tout it. They'll be like, well, we're because of the network. Everybody's signing up. They all signed up for SummerSlam. Yeah, yeah sure they did. Yeah. Meanwhile, everyone's leaving your company. Yeah. <laughs> Dak Prescott, he's really threading the ball towards the end, uh, uh, towards the uh, sidelines in this game. Well, I think he's just trying to not deal with that front seven because, yep. you know, he's trying to test their, he's trying to check, test their secondary and try to go, I think, kind of spread the field a little bit more. Yeah. Um, you know, because I think that's the one drawback on the the Buccaneers, they their front seven is exceptional, but their their secondary might be a little suspect at certain points. Yep. Oh. oh, oh, first down. Ah, uh, yes, the game against the Ravens in the AFC Championship where I was down one point with two minutes and 43 seconds to go. I was down 22 to 21, and I ended up winning the game 43-22. I scored 22 points in the last two minutes of the game off of, like, interceptions, onside kicks, just things like that. That was one of the wilder games. That's impressive. Yeah. Things just started going my way like crazy. It was just nuts. There was a game where I was down like 31. I'm trying to see if I have it on my YouTube channel. No, it doesn't appear it was taped. Yeah, that's the game where I beat the Vikings. I have the Los Angeles Rams and Chargers as my teams, so I can control both teams in Los Angeles. (laughs) <laughs> except donald's on the uh chargers because it was a fantasy draft league my right. favorite leagues to do are the fantasy draft leagues for so i don't know what it is because it's just if to me it kind of takes everything out of the reality of the sport where it's just like you don't have to worry about teams being congruent with how they are in real life it's just every team's just like rambled you know reassembled 40 yard line for the uh cowboys dak prescott drops back passes complete out of bounds nice routine uh Drop back the pass, catch, and out of bounds for Cooper to stop the clock. Minute 50 seconds. Cowboys looking sharp here. Three timeouts. There's no rush. They can take their time. Again, Double they got... penalty. Killed yeah. them. Yep. 
Because that got a midfield past midfield pretty much. Yep. And then they got a minute and fit. Well, the, the thing about it is though, too, yep. it does give Tampa Bay an opportunity to get the ball back before the yep. end of the half. So yes. Oh, well, depending on clock management here, we'll see how that clock management goes. Well, I feel like the Cowboys are really in a prime position because they got a minute and they got a minute. They can just drain the clock out if they wanted to. Yep. And also be able to sustain momentum. Yep. Third and three. Oof. Kind of a thread pass there. There was some pressure. The offensive line struggled on that particular play. Yeah, he was going to get swallowed up on that one. Yeah, receiver that there. Was... Really tight coverage by Dane. He was lucky he was able to get the ball out of his hand. Yep. All right, 31-yard line. Dak Prescott, shotgun formation. Three receivers to the right. Here we go. Drops back. Dak Prescott firing it. First down to Lamb. Lamb going for more up to the, about the 20. Minute 36 seconds. This is where maybe you want to let 10 seconds run off the clock or something with a spike or something. It's like you have to, like, you know how it is in Madden, too. You have to kind of let that clock go down a little bit, especially with Brady on the other side. There's about yeah. 10 seconds there, so that's good. You don't want him getting the ball back before the end of the half. Yeah. First down. Don't force anything, Dak. There you go. No. Good veteran play there. Just throw it out of bounds. He looks so much like um, fighter there. Um, John Jones, who's he always fight there? WWE fan. What's the guy's name? A Dak Prescott uh, looks like. Daniel Cormier. Daniel Cormier. Yeah, looks a lot like him. Yeah, decent pressure there. I think that Dak Prescott had no open yeah, receiver. That was. They made it official with Gable Stevens today, yeah. Yeah, that was yeah, Gable Stevenson. Yeah, that's a pretty good signing by WWE. He's a good talent. He's a great athlete. I'll tell you that much. I watched him win the Olympic gold medal. It was great. Dak Prescott, 21 yard line. Here we go. Drop back in the pass. He's going to run it. Oh, he's going to get caught up by a linebacker and sacked for a loss. Sack. Yep. Oh, hold on a second. I have a uh, guest here. Oh. It is Mr. Cody, the cat. Come here, Cody. Come here. Where are you? There you are. Good to see you, Cody. The good Cody, not the evil Cody. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cody the cat, I if love. Cody came, if, if Cody came into the room with 45 minutes of pyro, no one would care. Yeah, I think he just walked in the room with pyro somehow. Oh, Prescott running, 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 taken down. And we got a flag here. It must be a hold. Yeah, he's showing pretty good mobility, even with the ankle. Yeah. yeah it's going to be offensive holding. Offensive oh, that's holding. going to put him out of field goal range. Ten yards. They might as well just decline it because the airline's going to miss the 30-yarder anyways. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that gives Brady 26 seconds. No, third down. Oh, okay, third down. Plus the field goal kick, too. He's going to take time yeah, off the clock. He'll get the, well, he's going to have this play plus the field goal kick plus the kickoff. So it could be down to like eight seconds or something, or seven, eight to 17 seconds, somewhere in there. Okay. Yep, that's the pass rush I was thinking about. Okay, good. He's loose, and he's got nothing and nothing. Wow. Pun coming. So, yeah, Dan, about about that 8 to 17 second range for Brady once he gets this ball back here. Yeah, if I was Dak, I wouldn't even went out of bounds. I probably would have tried to. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I would have just taken it. That's exactly right. That's a good point. Why, if You know, if it's third down and you're going to turn the ball over, you might as well just take, you might as well just go. You better take, take it back. Lockout. That's a damn good point. I mean, I agree with that. Why, um, like you said, why stop the clock for him? And then give Brady an opportunity. Yep. You're pretty much giving him a, an easy timeout. Yep. So one timeout for Tampa, that all said. And we got an injury for the, uh, see the Bucks. Let's see, this is the issue here, too, for these teams that are, you know, you see this every year in football. You have these top-tier teams, 
And then everyone at the beginning of the season thinks they're going to come back and win. But then what happens is these key players start to get hurt here and there. And all of a sudden, a couple of weeks into the season, they're not as sharp as they were the previous season. That's, that's, those are the things that unwind the season completely. Yeah. But he looks like he's fine here. Maybe just a little dinged up. See, Dak Prescott, too, might be dealing with some uh, mental and physical exhaustion from uh, getting back in the swing of playing in a game that counts. You know, it has a it takes, that does a lot to you. You know, you haven't played in a game in two years, and you're back out oh, there. Yeah. You know, your momentum's all off. Your timing's off. Sometimes you're as good as you were. They're going to kick this thing. Clay Thompson's going to have to deal with that when they come when he comes back. Yeah. This year. Well, I was telling everyone that one year is a t- one year is tough enough to come back from enough. Two years is a complete fucking nightmare. Yeah. And one year is bad enough. Missing one year is always horrible in any sport. Never mind two. Wait. He'll come back. He may never be the same player again. 60-yard field goal attempt, which is going to give Brady the ball in range. This is dumb. And he he (laughs) missed it. Wide left. uh, Sorry, slightly left. It wound down. It was on target. And then it kind of... uh, So the um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers used their timeout, by the way. Oh. Yep. So he has to do it again. Um, let's see. I think they used it prior to that play. Let's see. So I think that kick, yeah, so that's going to, yeah, so the, the timeout was called previously, and then he kicked it, then he missed. And now they have no timeouts. So Brady's got some kind of strategy here. They're going to go deep to somebody. No timeouts at all. They'll keep a couple I'm of... Thinking, I'm keep, thinking Evans or... I'm thinking he's going to go to Mike Evans or he's going to Antonio Brown. He's going to keep someone back on the sideline somewhere, too, to throw it out. Yeah. It's probably going to be that running back. And there we go. I mean, he's got uh, midfield. I mean, yeah. So they could get a easy field goal here. Yep. At least. And that's money in this kind of game. With a five-point lead, you tack on three. It's eight. Yeah. That's a touchdown and two-point conversion needed. So that's a, that's a critical – this is where those missed field goals and extra points really come back to bite the Cowboys right now because it could be 21-20 right now as opposed to what you're saying. So it's that's why these little points tend to matter throughout the game. It's, you know, you miss a field goal, you miss an extra point. Yeah, you're losing, but you could only be losing by one. So that way if they do come back and get extra points on you, you know, your deficit's not as far back. So they got three deep there. Do the uh, secondary of the Cowboys. Brady's going to throw a quick out, and it's low. He's playing it safe. If he has nothing, he's just tossing it, conserving time. And this will be the this will be the big pass now. You're going to send Gronk the out. The thing is, the Patriots had a chance to end the Super Bowl this way against the Giants and the Eagles. They were like right there at the end. It was crazy. All right, six seconds to go. Midfield, Tom Brady, shotgun. Three receivers right. One to the left. Tom Brady dropping back. Here comes the big pass. All out. Deep, 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 deep. And intercepted. Intercepted. It's being taken out of the end zone now. Here come the Cowboys. I think that might have been dropped. And he's taken down just after getting over the 50. So that... uh, that may or may not have been an interception. I'm not sure. That was a good defensive play, though. Let's see at this replay here. Interception. The ball's deflected. The ball goes down. That is an interception for sure. Oh, jeez. He got tucked too far. The best play. The best place to run the ball on a, a return play is right up the middle if you can. But in his case, he was tucked too far in the left and had to run up the left side of the field. And then just kind of got stuck in that funnel of players and couldn't get out of it. So, um, okay, we got halftime. Let's take a break, Dan. Let's take a break for about uh, about 10, 12 minutes. And uh, refresh yeah. your water or whatever, your beer and uh, snacks. And uh, we'll catch up at uh, about about 10, 20. Sound good? All right. Sounds All good. Right, talk to you then. All right, I'll play some music right. and we'll be back. All right.
royalty-free music. Discover at the
welcome back to Mazda Media. Mark, your host here tonight. We are live on Facebook Live for the second half of our show, which starts right now. We're getting ready for the second half of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Super Bowl 55 champions, led by Tom Brady, out there against the Dallas Cowboys in the return of Dak Prescott down in Tampa, Florida tonight. So it's been a great game so far, very unpredictable. Um, at times it seems like one team's going to take over the other, but somehow it keeps evening back out. And uh, at the very end of the first uh, quarter, it was tied at 7. Uh, but going into the half, 21-16, to 16, defending champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the Dallas Cowboys are going to get the ball first. So we're going to see what ends up uh, happening here in this quarter. But it was unpredictable. I mean, it was some significant turnovers by the Buccaneers. Uh, there were also some significant errors by the um, kicking team, by Zerline, Greg Zerline, the kicker for the um, Cowboys, two missed field goals. One one was acceptable from distance, 60 yards. It was an acceptable miss. Uh, the other one was a 31-yard miss, um, as well as a missed extra point. Those are the so two of the three kicks were kind of um, errant, uh, but the other one from 60, that's an acceptable miss. We can we can certainly get off a kicker's back for missing a 60-yarder, um, of course. So that was kind of where the Cowboys' faults were. Could be closer to a 21-20 game um, if things went more in favor of the Cowboys. But then again, if the Bucks hadn't get a tipped interception um, from Brady or uh, fumbled the ball, um, you know, they could be looking at a bigger lead themselves. There's two ways of looking at that. I'd like to welcome Dan back uh, with us here, the lone dog, lone wolf. Member of the panel here tonight with me. Yes, because I'm Mr. Reliable, so I guess <laughs> at some points, Christ Almighty. Yeah. Uh, I'm like that at work, you know? It's yep. just like everybody in my department just looks at me, and they're just like, well, Dan was in the most days again this year, and it's like, no shit. We'll fix, we'll, <laughs> bold prediction for the game. Whoever leads at the end of the third quarter wins the game. What do you think? That's probably a fair assessment, yeah. um, unless the only thing I could consider ha uh, could see happening is if the Buccaneers have the ball in the last two minutes and they're down by like four or five, then it's just like, oh, shit. Yep. Absolutely. I know where this is going. Kind of a back-and-forth game. you got to be happy if you're Dak Prescott, though. He, um, he's he been out of the league for a year due to injury. I agree. And he's having a real good game against the defending Super Bowl champions in Tampa Bay. This is a tough assignment for a comeback game. You kind of want to play more of like a middle-of-the-road or below team in your comeback game, but he's not getting any luck. I think he's 23 of 33, which is actually mm -hmm. which is very, very good. Yeah, that's very uh, good. No touchdowns, but at the same time, I mean, he's still putting up mm -hmm. uh, pretty decent numbers. Yeah. Um, and then too, with, uh, uh, you know, Brady, I think was seeing his statistics. I think it was 13 to 21 with, uh, three touchdowns, but two interceptions. Yeah. And, and um, uh, the, the stat of the night probably goes to Antonio Brown though, with four touch, four receptions, 130, uh, like 118 yards and one touchdown. Mm, that's a standout stat for sure by Brown. I no doubt that deep pass adding to the yards here. We have another third player down for the uh, Bucks here tonight um, on that defense. That defense is taking hits right now. Yeah, the Brady interceptions, just to talk about that for a moment while they have an injury timeout here on the field, um, kind of not really on Brady too much because one of them was a tipped pass where the receiver couldn't catch it. It was tipped and intercepted. And then the last one was just kind of like a Hail Mary pass, which is right. damned if you do, damned if you don't. So kind of really not, not really chalked up the bad performance by Brady. I think both quarterbacks are having pretty good games here. Any thoughts on that? Um, you know, I'm, I wasn't surprised that Dax was going to come out with a good performance just because of the fact that just, you know, I, I think he's doing what he can. He's not doing anything risky. Um, you know, he's maintaining stability, I think, for the Cowboys. It's just the problem is, is that every time that um, Dallas seems to have some type of momentum they either get snuffed out or the goddamn kicker blows it for them mm -hmm. so yeah, it's interesting it's, just... it's like tampa bay's allowed them into the game but at the same time their own kickers kind of kept them from being further into the game in terms of you know being down maybe one point instead of five points at this point due to missed kicks but you know this is a manageable score i don't think it's anything like um you know if if Dallas wins tonight, no one's gonna think. No one's gonna remember the fact that they blew the the field goal and the miss and the extra point. Um, but at the same time, if they lose by four, or they lose by three. If they lose by 
or the score stays the same. Everybody in Dallas, especially on their the the uh, sports uh, media down there, they're just going to be living and dying by that for the next for a month and a half. Yeah, available you know, like at least for the next week, anyways, till next week's game. Mm-hmm. They'll be just gonna be like, they should be one and zero by now. I mean, mm-hmm. God, the, the goddamn <laughs> kicker blew the goddamn field goal, and then all of a sudden the extra point. I mean, every time they had momentum, they just got snuffed out. <laughs> I'm Skip Bellis. Uh, Skip Bellis. Absolutely <laughs> horrible the way he acts. And a completion right there. The Cooper's having a real good game tonight. He's catching a lot of good catches, making a lot of good catches. I think that we're, I'm wondering, I'm worried that the uh, Facebook page is lowering our viewership because I don't think we're getting as much viewership as we usually get for watch parties right now. It looks like we're, uh, I'm not sure where we're at, but it looks like about 46 people reached. So I'm hoping yeah. that maybe some page flags that we've had in the past aren't coming back to bite us. But we'll see what oh, the final yes. numbers are. Not that we're really worried about numbers, but I just, I, I'm just concerned about getting uh, as much viewers as possible in terms of just, you know, giving ourselves an opportunity and you know, as opposed to... It's all not, about reach. Yeah, just being able to reach people as opposed to being shut down. So we'll see here. Dak Prescott. All the people that thought I had an AEW now, they could be like, oh, yeah. well, we'll just listen in to see if he's bash. Oh, he's talking yeah. about football. Forget it. You're right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I, I joined this place, I came, excuse me, I came here for an argument, like uh, the Monty Python. <laughs> I came here for an argument. Jeez. I came here for an argument. Yeah. Well, this, is gonna be, this is what's great about football, though, is all the coaching. Like, this is the ultimate coaching sport where you have multiple coaches on the sidelines, coordinators on both ends of the ball. You know, everything's a matchup game. Everything's a scheme game. Everything's an adjustment game. You know, so it's, it's a lot of, this is the most coaching active game in all of sports. And let's see, they're going to run up the Zeke, but Zeke's going to get taken down quick. They're shutting down the running game. I keep forgetting, I keep forgetting who the defensive coordinator is, because I know he used to play for the for the Bucks. I know he used to coach Todd for Bowles? the uh, Jets. Yeah, yeah Todd, Todd Bowles, Bowles, yeah. Really yeah. yeah. <laughs> another, another coach that sometimes are better served as coordinators, like Wade Phillips was a better coordinator than yes. he was a head coach. Better coordinator than head coach. Yeah. Josh McDaniels, same Ryan. thing. Yeah. Um, Josh McDaniels, another one just like that. Romeo Cornell, same thing. Just some people are just better off in those roles. Charlie Weiss. Yeah. And some people get head coach. It's not for everybody. You know, sometimes head coaching is not for everybody. You know, it kind of makes you look like a little bit of, it makes you look weaker in people's eyes. But I mean, if you, I mean, if you're, what you can do is best is coordinating. That's great. I say, I mean, if you can do that, that's perfect. Some people enjoy that more. I mean, you don't get as much money, but. At the same time, you know, if you can, like, even Spagnuolo couldn't really head coach, but he was a great coordinator. You know, he was another oh, one. Yeah, we don't know about him. Yeah, <laughs> we know nothing about him. But uh, Brady, Brady finally got him back in the Super Bowl last year. Yeah, he got a receipt finally. It took yeah. him 15 years, but he did hey, it. Hey, Spags. <laughs> <laughs> they tore down Building 19. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that, that was uh, that was. Uh, I was out there in local. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was out there a couple weekends ago, and um, I was running some errands in White City, do, dropping some stuff off at the UPS store, some Amazon returns, and made a couple stops. And I'm uh, looking at Whole Foods. I'm like, I cannot believe what the hell's become of that place. It looks great, but it just it doesn't look the same, yeah. you know. I think that was my dad's favorite store because yeah. it was the only place that he could have went to. Where he could have got hardware for jobs, and then if he wanted a Christmas shop for the kids, he could do that. Uh, <laughs> so not serious. It's just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like, it, but he Sears sold tools, but they didn't sell like pipes. Oh right, and, right. Fittings and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I know what you mean. Sold that stuff. Right. So uh, he, uh, yeah, I remember, um, I remember in '99 actually. Uh, I was supposed, I went to wrestling um, and it was when WWF was hot in 99 and I was, we ended up getting like the last seats of the building. <laughs> we were in the last row and then my brother decided to leave early. So I had to go home early. Oh, So I told my dad this, my dad was pissed. So I think it was later on that week. He, 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 um, I caught home and he's just like, come here. He's like, he's like, I got these as spags. I didn't know if you wanted them. And it was an autograph Hulk Hogan plaque and a Goldberg oh. plaque. Oh, wow. 
unbelievable type of like because he felt bad yeah like, that was and it was and i just looked at him and i just said i am was, never selling these was it like, raw these are gonna, or was it a live event? Collect. no it was raw it was oh, a live geez. taping of raw oh okay got it jeez but yeah they were they were certified plaques by wcw and jeez. by figures and the ones they used to sell in the uh figures in catalog which yeah that was that was my Sears catalog back in the day. <laughs> yeah, right. I still remember the first time I saw replica belts. I almost hit the floor. Yeah, right. Yeah, I have, two, I have two of them seated behind me right now. They're the kids' ones, though. I got them back in like oh four. I got the world heavyweight. I got the ones from like WrestleMania the nineteen WrestleMania nineteen era ones. Like, oh, right, right. Yeah, right, like right. those those versions. Like, I got them for like 20 bucks each on the pro wrestling. Uh, whatever that place used to be down in Rhode Island, they had the magazine there. The Super Wrestling yeah, yeah, Store. Yeah, yeah, they're pro uh, wrestling, wrestling superstore. Yeah, wrestling superstore, yeah. yeah. Or wrestling figures, whatever. They were figures, Inc., and I think now yeah. they're, uh, they're they're actually out of Tampa. Okay, they moved yeah. To, they moved down south, so. Yep. Yeah, I ended up just, I wanted that. I wanted Armageddon 2000. I think that's all I ever bought out of that catalog. But I wanted, I just wanted some, like, little belts, you know. I don't want to go out oh, and spend four hundred dollars on real ones. I'm like, yeah, I'll take those little twenty dollar dinky ones there, <laughs> rinky dink ones. Plenty from them. What's that? Yeah, bought bought plenty from them. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have um, Prescott here. Touchdown? No, down to the two. Go ahead, Dan. I, I if I did a count, I think the last uh, the the belts. I think I'm at seven. Jeez, real ones too. Yes. Well, uh, a few of them I did buy from. Yes, I, um, I know other sources. Yeah, other sources, but they're very high quality replicas, anyways. Yeah. It's just the pack, the fact that they're a third of the price of what you're going to pay. Yeah, sure. Uh, but I think the next one I'm going to buy is probably. Yeah, I'm probably going to double the millimeters on the plates. Third goal. Be, so. Pitch out. Up, oh, Ezekiel Elliott shut down immediately at the three. They've been shutting down Elliott all night long, and there's a field goal coming yeah. up here. Cowboys might just want if to Elliott try to go not, for this damn thing. If Elliott does not have a uh, a better performance, there's going to be some loud cries in Dallas yeah. uh, coming shortly. Yeah, I mean, he's playing a top-notch defense nonetheless, but you still expect them to get like 100 yards anyways. The amount of money you're paying him, yes. Yeah. I wonder if they should just. I mean, I wonder if they should just break. You're gonna go kick the field goal. I wonder if they should just try to go for it, but they're gonna try to kick it here. And he should line right up here. That should be an automatic, and he got it. He tucked that in tight towards the left crossbar. All right, two point game. Now that missed field goal and extra points. See how that's coming back to bite down. I would say so. I mean, yeah. it seems like this uh, kickers having issues. They want, yeah. you know, they want to try to probably get to the right hash mark because yeah. it seems like everything that he's kicking is going to the left. Yeah. Buy one, get one for a dollar. Burger King. Your thoughts on that? God damn it! <laughs> God damn it! Why do they do this? To the... Yeah, I went out for like a three mile walk Saturday. For three point one seven miles, I walked on Saturday evening. And uh, afternoon, evening. And I came back down towards the Burger King. And I was like, I wanted to go in there and get like a Bacon King or something. I'm like, don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. <laughs> don't do it. I've been hungrier uh, the past few days from all that. Well, I walked six and a half miles over the weekend total. Like, geez. Yeah, it's... um. Every time I go by Burger King, they're the only fast food joint that I can smell. It's true, isn't it? Like, it's the only one you can smell because of the char. Like you can smell the burgers, mm -hmm. and it's just like I don't know if it's their filtration system or it's the fact of mm -hmm. just you smell that grill going, and all of a sudden you're just like, God damn it! Mm -hmm. Like, and it just makes your mouth water completely. You're just like, you want to go in there and grab a burger, double cheese, double onions, motherfucker! <laughs> yeah. We haven't talked about that joke in a long time. I was going to say that, uh, yeah, McDonald's, they just, like, oven cook or whatever they do, they microwave it or whatever, and it's like, you can never, uh, there's been times where I've been closer to McDonald's than Burger King on the main street there, and I can smell Burger King, and I'm closer to McDonald's. It's, like, unreal. Burger King, I mean, I've been, like, five or six buildings down 
the street and I'm like, I can smell the burgers through the wind. It's like, makes you just uh, want to walk right in the door. It's like, my goodness, I'll take a, uh, I'll take a Whopper, please. Can I get a double Whopper, double bacon, double cheese, double onions? Real double question. Mayo. Real question. You can have one burger and that's it. Big Mac or a Whopper? I'm going Whopper. I'm going Whopper, too. I'm going Whopper. Whopper, the Whopper blows away the Big Mac. I agree. And it's not because, and I and I, I understand that everybody's going to be like, but the, the, the secret sauce, I understand that. But the, the Whopper is bigger, it's cooked better, and you can have it your way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they got better tomatoes, better onions. You know, I like the way they just like they don't dice the onions; they just kind of put the onion, you know, as its own loop. It's right on there. I like it that way. Double cheese, yep. double onions, <laughs> double mayo. They just showed footage of Brady against the Steelers from O2, the uh, yeah, banner that. night. Yeah, that was funny because I think he's going to be a great quarterback in this league for a long time. Twenty years later, seven Super Bowls. Nice kick return here by the Bucks. All right, uh, score cap here, uh, recap here. 21 to 19, Bucks. Nine minutes, eight seconds into the, left in the third. Tom Brady coming out for his first uh, possession of the half. Evans and Antonio Brown coming out along with them. With Gronk <laughs> and Godwin. So they got their their weapons all over the place, ready to try to repeat as champions. Long road this year, 17 games in the regular season. Buccaneers yeah. starting at the 30-yard line. They're on 30. Mm-hmm. Oh, Michael's just tried to correct you there. He said 33. Damn son of a bitch. Ah, so fuck you, Michael. <laughs> He's like, 33-yard line. Like, Don't correct, Dan. Don't correct, Dan. Most career regular season starts. Stats coming up now. Rice at 284. Breeze tops him at 286. Bruce Matthews, 292. Brett Favre, 298. And Brett, uh, Brady, Brett Favre gets topped by Tom Brady with 300 games. Uh, for oldest starting, second oldest quarter, uh, second oldest starting quarterback in NFL history, uh, between behind Steve DeBerg, oh, Tom Brady, most starts in NFL history, which is uh, crazy. Oh yeah, well, I heard about that Steve. season too, right? I guess so. Yes, he missed uh, the 08 seasons. I mean, yeah. you think about it, shit. Yep, he'd already have a lot more of the records, anyways, if he played yeah. that year. That oh that 08 team would have been really good still because they had most of their players back from 07. They might have been able, they might have been able to make a run. They would have beat the card the shit out of the Cardinals in the Super Bowl. That's well, they did in the regular season. That was with Matt yeah, Castle. That's right, 47 to seven. You know, and it's just it's just crazy to think that <laughs> that could have been it. You know, that could have it's, it's terrible about it going that the two, those two seasons went horrible for us because we played the wrong team in the Super Bowl and we were 18 and 0. And then when yeah. we had a year, we probably could have just knocked the doors right down. You know, Brady getting rushed there, throwing the ball down to the ground. And flag might be intentional grounding. No receiver and in the pocket. You know, then in 08, that might have been wide open for us. Yeah, 08, I, if Brady didn't get hurt, I thought they would have probably redeemed themselves from the year before. Holding. Maybe Offense. You know, something. Declined. Fourth down. Okay. Buccaneers will punt. Go ahead, Dan. Sorry. Now we got that game up there. That was a good idea. To, that was a good idea to decline it. Yeah. Don't give him another shot. Yeah. Don't give him another shot. Yep. Holding there. There's been some good pass rushing by the Cowboys. Not as good as the Bucks, but. There's been some times where they've really gotten to Brady a little bit. Definite holding there. I mean, geez. Not enough. I, I feel like the thing about the I feel like the defense for the Cowboys has actually been pretty. Yeah. I wouldn't say mediocre, but they've held their own. No, they have absolutely, and they were ranked fourth in the NFC on according to one of the polls uh, that came out today. They were fourth best NFC team. Now defense, I think the Cowboys zone infraction five yard penalty still fourth down. I, I still think I think the Cowboys are going to su not surprise some people, but I do think they're going to make a they're going to be at least in the playoffs I, and maybe in the discussion for the Super Bowl. But I don't know if they're going to make it. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, bottom of the ninth, Blue Jays lead the Yankees six four. All right. It's it's kind of like a damn it kind of it sucks either way because then the Blue Jays are catching up, but the Yankees are losing. Uh, yeah. 
All right, kick return, punt return Stumbles. attempt here. Stumbles, bumbles, but Lamb gets up, gets all the way up to about the 24, 25. So, yeah, this is a dogfight, Dan. This is a good game. This is a very good game. Very close. Did you see that um, guy in the crowd with the, the Dallas Star glasses there and the white glass? Look like the macho man. <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> the oversized fucking cowboy hat with the fucking goddamn cowboy. Yeah. Like, you're just an asshole. <laughs> no one's as big of an asshole as Dusty Rhodes coming in sixth place, Dan. Six place. You know, the sad thing about Cody Rhodes is you should now just, he's no longer like the American nightmare. He's the expendable. <laughs> he's the guy right now in that company that you could get rid of tomorrow and no one would give a shit. R Rashida Jones, Dan. Rashida Jones. Hop. Uh, where is she on the TV? In? What? Yeah, she's from, <laughs> yeah, from Parks and Recreation, yeah. Yeah, I would say Rashida Jones is cute. I'd say so. That's yeah. Cool. Um, uh, Billy has yeah, embraced hating least... people over football instead of other things, which is good. Congratulations, Billy. Thank you. That is good. Oh, that's 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 positive thinking. I mean, uh... <laughs> <laughs> we can finally stop hating each other over race and politics and start hating each other for the right reason. Football. Football. There we go. There we go. Uh, yeah, Blue Jays have swept the Yankees and are half a game behind the Red Sox. Ah, oh, shit. That's all right. They just traded places with the Yankees. That's all that happened. We still got the lead, so that's important. So the Red Sox got the White Sox coming up, though. That's going to be a bit of a problem. The lead. The lead. <laughs> the lead. <laughs> I'm flitting Adam Cole. Go to AW Triple H. My left arm is tingling. That was that made for such an easy joke though. Like so that guy, one guy was going off about everyone joking about Triple H. I'm like, but you have to understand, as horrible it is is to crack jokes about it. You have to understand like how perfectly timed that was though. Like Adam Cole was Perfect just time. literally on AEW Sunday. Then two days later it's like, oh, Triple H needed surgery. <laughs> yeah. Oh, surgery is it's really because of all this Yeah, it's <laughs> my surgery is a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, he's done all those steroids all those years. That's what happened to Arnold in the nineties. He needed the heart hey, surgery. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. hey. You know Arnold was using the right. The accusations here. Oh, please. Yeah. Intercepted by the Bucks. Beach Ball Mania breaking out in the crowd down in Tampa Bay as well. And they're going all the way back inside the 20 and a flag down. Potential face mask, I believe. Beach Ball Mania. You see the oh, beach fuck. ball on the screen? Yeah. So it's... This is the Bucks' opportunity to bust this game open now. They could care less about the football game. They'd rather play fucking beach ball. Yeah. You're the goddamn defending world champions, for Christ's yeah. sake. Act like it. Okay, what's the penalty here? Might be an additional penalty against the Cowboys. <laughs> My heart surgery is a mystery. <laughs> Both teams. <laughs> <clears throat> return team penalty as well 10 yard penalty Me? yeah 10 yard penalty <laughs> isn't it always weird like you know you watch a team in the Super Bowl or championship and it's like the first game of the next season and it's just like it still has like that aura of the championship but it's not the championship you know what I, I kind of mean by that it kind of yeah because you know, yeah. how many I think that was um I remember, I think it was the 2017 regular season. They opened up again. They they just they just won the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 51, and then they were playing the Chiefs the opening week, and they lost. And I remember talking to um, to Billy about it. He's just like, "Ooh, we beat you." I'm like, "Who gives a shit?" <laughs> yeah, 
Week one. You think I'm really thinking about that? I said, you really think I'm care- really giving shit about week one? Didn't you guys beat us in like week three or four or five and then we won the Super Bowl anyways and didn't even face you in the playoffs? Players. It's like, like, well, we kicked your ass in Kansas City. It's like, yeah. It doesn't matter. Or you, it's the it's, weekly game. It's like the, it's like the Miami <laughs> game with the Miami Miracle. It's like, who gives a shit? We won yeah. the Super Bowl in here. Yeah, it's all about the Super Bowl. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's like we beat the New York yeah. Giants and to go 16-0, and 0, but we lost to them in the Super Bowl. You know, exactly. It doesn't matter, you know? To me, 2007 is just like an incomplete year because we didn't win yeah. anything. Yeah. Absolutely. This is a chance for the Buccaneers now to bust this game wide open. Should they go for two if they get a touchdown to make it out a 10-point lead? Um... Uh... Let me ask you the real question. Should they add chips and drinks and make that Subway sub a meal? Three, yes. So okay. I would go for two. Okay. All right. That beach ball is still getting tossed around in that crowd out there. I mean, Brady's ready to probably, like, go up there and pull a Cesaro and just rip the thing apart. I know. No having fun! Yeah. <laughs> Take the beach ball and get the hell out. Actually, it's actually probably Giselle in her section. She's yeah. probably just playing It's the ball. kids. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, the daughter gets the game ball after the game. Every fucking time. Yep. Brady drops back the pass to the running back, and it's to Fournette. Tackled quick. And the, the Cowboys are hoping to hold them to a field goal, which would re-extend that five-point lead that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers held coming into the second half. Under seven to go in the third quarter. Dak Prescott watching from the sidelines, delirious, as he should be. It's a close game, and the last thing he wants Cup to do is see this game. Seven. Oh, yep. God, it annoys me so it, much. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Yeah, it does. It's going to be tough to come back from a two-score lead against the Bucs, too, when, when you have them, you know, in such close quarters combat right now. So, But Brady's really good it's in these third. Come on, the fuck. Yeah, Brady's really good in these third-down offensive situations. So two receivers on each side. Brady draws back. Big blitz to Gronk. Touchdown. Right up the middle of the Gronk. Blitz came from the outside. Front of the uh, lines opened up like a Red Sea and uh, right up the Gronk. So that's 27-19. That's a, you know what, that's an eight-point lead. You know, maybe you just might as well go for the extra point. It's funny how Gronk doesn't have any injuries when he's playing for Tampa. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, I can't play anymore. I'm hurt. Two years later. Oh, I'm hanging out in Tampa Bay. What's going on, guys? It's the weather. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brady to Gronk twice tonight. Extra uh, point. You're gonna keep the. By Brady. the way, if if Billy if Billy is listening, Gronk is better than Travis Kelsey. We're not having this conversation yeah. anymore. That conversation is over. Yep. Like, it's, I mean, Gronk you, is better than Travis. Think about it reasonably. Gronk technically beat Kelsey in the Super Bowl last year. Am I right? He did technically. Yeah. I mean, maybe he's not, he's not maybe Gronk from 10 years ago, but he's still Gronk. Yeah, if he had his prime his whole career, because he really never really had a prime because he's always been hurt. You know, he's like, yeah, I've always called him Robo Gronk, uh, Robo Gronk because he's always been rebuilt. You know, Cyborg Gronk or something, you know, it's like Gronkborg, you know, it's just always so rebuilt. dominant in the video game, it's not even funny. Oh, yeah, it's insane. Such, plus, he's such a big target. It's like, boom, right up there. You give me, yeah. you give me Brady Gronk and Edelman in Madden 17. That's all I need. I don't care what the hell the rest of that offense is. I don't care. I don't need anything. I don't need anybody else but like standard players. That's it. It doesn't matter if I have Gronk, Brady, and Edelman. That's all I need. I just, I just build that. I, I, just, I, I have uh, gotten smarter as far as my depth is concerned. But goddamn, I gotta have like I, I love. There's nothing more than I love building a Madden team. Hmm. Like it's just and just constructing it from like piece by piece. Yep. And then working with the salary cap, and then Greg getting the you know getting talent, uh, getting enough. I mean, I love playing 17 so much because a lot of the, my favorite players, number one, are still playing hmm. before they retired or just start to enter their twilight. Plus, there's a lot of guys, a lot of the up and comers like Aaron Donald, who's still on his rookie contract. Right. So you can get him, so you can get him That's right. reasonably cheap. You give me like Donald, you give me like Julio Jones, Aaron Donald, and Khalil Mack, like I had on the Chargers, I'll win it out. You know, then all I need is like decent running backs, receivers, just decent players. I mean, I was, 
give me some Revis and I'll make some changes. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you got to have some good corners. I had, what's his name there? Harrison. Sure. Harrison from the Vikings I had on the team, too. That was a good team I had. Then, then my Rams team was like Drew Brees and Derrick Henry. And I ended up struggling with them in the playoffs. Oh, my God. I think I lost the NFC Championship with them, and then I ended up facing... The team I lost, the team I lost to with the Rams, I ended up beating with the Chargers in the Super Bowl because I knew my Chargers team was better. You know, I'd done two different team builds, but I knew my Chargers team was just way better built. And I don't monopolize the talent where I trade all the talent from one team to, you know, what I'm saying it's like I try to keep them both like talented as possible. Yeah, I just monopolize. If it's if it's <laughs> yeah exactly, Dan's like no salary cap, all all trade overrides. Uh, everybody's coming home, baby. <laughs> the pain uh, in the ass. Of, well, yeah, you can't because you can't do trade overrides. You gotta fucking oh, that's right. like trading you, is you difficult gotta, and mad. Too. It's pain in the ass. Like today, I was doing some doing some work and on it, and I uh, I I wanted to get Richard Sherman, mm -hmm. so I had to trade like I offered him at one point like three first round picks. Jeez. The problem was it was one first round pick from this year and then two for next year. Yeah, they do value. I did. Yep. So I had to get two first round picks from that year, and then I threw in another corner, and then I was able to get them. But it's yep. just like this little ticky tacky shit. Sometimes you got to move around with. Yep. That's why a lot of times I try to get as many players as humanly possible that are good. Yep. On a. Uh, on my starting roster, the the yep. one that you can start the season with, um, and then just. But the problem is that you got to deal with the salary cap. Where um, when I get my franchise mode, I can manipulate the salary cap. Well, here's the thing: I know that playing defense is more difficult than offense, and I can I I'll if I, I that's why I use with my Chargers. I when I did the fantasy draft, I built up the defense first. I won't like like the defensive players weren't going. It's all the other. Computer teams are down, you know, drafting offensive players. So said, okay, I'll take Donald. Okay, I'll take Khalil Mack. Okay, I'll take Harrison Smith. You know, and I just kept, I, I think the first five picks were defense. And I said, I'm not even going to draft the quarterback. I'm just going to go all the way down and just build up like it. Because I know if I have an ironclad defense, I can hold the, the offense down enough on the opposing team to keep myself in the game with a modest offense. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what yeah. happened. I'm I'm completely different. I'm just like, yeah. fuck it. Just let's get like everybody that I like. Let's just get them on the team. Yeah. Then I had Dak Prescott and uh, some other running back, but I ended up trading him for Drew Brees and uh, Derrick Henry. That's what happened. I had Dak Prescott and somebody else, but I made it. I got I wanted Derrick Henry and um, Drew Brees as my running back quarterback tandem. So. And, uh, I end up getting. I now have the tandem of Todd Gurley and Derek Henry. Yeah. Seems I don't know I need both. <laughs> and do you have injuries yeah. turned off? You turned off injuries, didn't you? No, I didn't turn off injury. Okay. I turn off the pre-exist. I always turn off oh, pre-existing. Pre yep. Yep. I don't blame you Which, for that at all. Yeah, because that's fucking stupid. Yep. And then, uh, but no, I I leave. But usually, what happens is is that. Um, I let one player score a touchdown, and then I bring in another guy, and then I let another player score a touchdown, oh, okay. and bring in another guy. Yeah, so it's kind of like a rotation. You ought to set then, you ought to set up your goal line offense when you do the I formation or goal line offense that has a fullback and a running back to have Derrick Henry in as the fullback and Gurley in at the running back on the same play. You can preset it and that way. If you want to do a fullback handoff. To Derrick Henry, you can do it, but then you still have Todd Gurley if you want to run the ball in from the running back position. Trust me, if you do right. that, you're gonna freaking you, you won't be as stopped on the goal line at all. Eh, uh, I, I don't have problems. <laughs> Did you play on fucking easy? No, I'm <laughs> well, there's a thing called tuning, you see. Yeah, yeah. Sliders. There's things called sliders. Yes. The defense forgets what planet they're on as soon as you hike the ball. 28, 19, <laughs> second and 10. Uh, Cowboys crossing into the Buccaneers' side of the field. Critical drive here for the Cowboys. Touchdown to England. Touchdown to England. Touchdown yep. to England. All right. Dak Prescott drops back. Passes. Complete the lamb. Up to about the 32. Yeah, so this is um, game critical here for the Cowboys. 
right now down 28 19 that's a nine point deficit you got about 18 point minutes left in regulation uh, you need any kind of points you can get at this point preferably a touchdown uh, but even a field goal will get you within six um, which is probably not the best case scenario but it is something so if they don't get anything on this drive this game's probably effectively like, like we talked about our, our, our third quarter challenge for this game and the show tonight was that with the team that's leading the third quarter win this game and right now that is pending that it could be uh, could be likely here. So the Cowboys got to get something done. Third and one, play action fake, roll out by Prescott, throws the ball, caught and out of bounds by Schultz. Yeah. Tampa Bay has been allowing a lot of offense. They've been allowing them to get deep into drives, but they have not allowed them in the end zone. Yeah. Um, you know, that, which is the key factor here is the fact that, I mean, yes, they are allowing uh, a lot of they are allowing a lot of uh, a lot of yards. Like Dak is putting, his, I think he's close to around 300 yards already. Mm. However, he has not. Uh, it is not materialized in the red zone and the end zone at all either. Sacked. So I mean, oh no, he got out. He broke. Ooh, he was almost he was almost consumed by the defense. Broke out of the pocket, ran, and then dove. Wow. Yep. Look at that. The offensive lineman came all the way back. He got. I thought he was down right there. Yeah. He just, he just Eli'd his way the fuck out. Well. Sorry. Yeah, it's all right. Second and eight. 25 yard line now, Dak Prescott. Minute 30 it's like seconds. Now, every time you see that play, you're just like, ah. yeah. Pitch out. Ezekiel Elliott needs to get. He needs to get some yardage going here. That's about five. He needs to get going. He really, they, they really need it. It's he really needs to get this yardage going. They need to break down those, break down those first and tens that some of his running. You know, nine play, nine plays, fifty-four yards is the current drive. Time of the drive is five minutes twenty-two seconds and counting. They are right about the red zone right now. The Cowboys and the uh, Levante David's frustrated right now on the defense for the uh, or White, I should say. Go ahead, Dan. They're being smart about the fact that they're playing a, a really kind of meticulous drive in the sense of that they're being able to continue the drive and also drain uh, drain the clock at the same time. Which touchdown, is touchdown to Cooper. It is good. Cooper is knocked out, knocked out, knocked out. I mean, uh, banged up, I should say. He's knocked up. That sounded horrible. <laughs> he, he is knocked up. I'm just kidding. Dak Prescott, Ooh. right on the money. Touchdown. 75-yard drive. Yeah, that Oof. He got hit hard. Amari Cooper, yeah. Nice out route right there, or a slant route. He seems to be all right, though. Yeah. He kind of ran up and out, kind of like a corner strike type of play. Yeah, corner strike. Bam. Press, I mean, the Cowboys oh. are playing a good game, man. I mean... If they just, if this kicker would just make, like I said, the kicker's killing them right now. I mean, for those misses. Three point game at worst. And Dak is a, two point if, game. 28 26. If you're, a fan, if you're a fantasy owner, you really like what Dak has been doing. I'm playing against Dak Prescott in fantasy as we speak. But, See, uh, you're pretty pissed off. Uh, I still got uh, Matthew Stafford going Sunday night against the Bears. So we'll see. He's got 31 fantasy yeah, yeah. points. I have a 41% chance of winning my fantasy week now, thanks to Dak Prescott, who has a 38-point projection with 31.4, 31.54 fantasy points right now. And, of course, you have another draft this weekend because somebody yeah. can't get their shit together before the season starts. I got Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup, and Julio Jones as my receivers. I got Nick Chubb, Exeller, and Carson as my running backs. I got the San Francisco defense. Levante David's already given me 7.5 fantasy points tonight off defense, which is pretty good. So, and then Suckup's having a so-so game for Tampa. He's only got four points, so that's good news. So, I'm not in too dire of a situation right now. I got a pretty solid team. So, let's do it. Actually, Fuck. maybe even waiting a week to draft in fantasy may not be a bad thing because if a couple players get hurt this weekend, it changes the outcome yeah, of the draft. You could, it changes yeah. the outcome of the draft. That's true. Uh, maybe Joe, evil genius. Only duos to reach 100 touchdowns in NFL history. Brady and Gronk join Marvin Harrison and Peyton Manning. Ow. At last. Oh 
Well, don't let that distract you from the fact they did most of that in Patriot uniforms. Yeah, but you know. Yeah, the way that the way that Brady left, he's kind of like Adam Cole left. <laughs> yeah. Adam Cole, baby. Except I'm not even mad that Adam Cole left. I'm just mad that Tom Brady left. Yeah. I mean, it, like wrestlers are wrestlers no matter where they are, really. You know, it's... Um, it, it doesn't change. Yeah. Like, it, it, if you're rooting... Like, the thing about it is, is I'm rooting for these... Like, I want the business to be successful. Mm-hmm. And I and I want the business also... Like, and yes, I everybody can sit there and be like, oh, but you gave them so much shit. Yeah. Because the wrestling business for a period sucked, even when they were doing things. But right now, they have a great roster. I think they're going to be able to turn the corner. Uh, you know, and WWE, I think, is going to be in the midst of a restructure. Uh, Mark and I have been talking about it privately in the chat. I said the other day, I'm like, I think Vince has lost it. And they're going to do something. They're probably just going to sell. And then Mark just came out with, he's just like... Yeah, they could be in the middle of a restructure, which now I'm thinking about it, it's probably what's going to happen. I think they're trying to move away yeah. from the indie talent, and they want right. more mainstream stars. Right. And the indie guys are the ones that are leaving. Your Adam Coles, your Brian Danielsons, your CM Punks, uh, even retrospectively CM Punk, he never came back uh, to WWE. I mean, it, is, it is, they are getting the ratings, because they got over 1.3 million viewers. Their demos beat Raw this week. But the question is, are they going to be able to sustain it? Yeah. Like, I don't like, is it going to be, is six front months from now, are they going to be back to under a million people and like struggling yep. to hit the demo? I mean, I don't know. Like, it, Raw's going to be taking a, a beating in the ratings now, though, too, because starting on Monday, you got Monday Night Football to worry about. Mm-hmm. Dan, bad news. The what? The Rays are drawing the Orioles next. Ah, oh, shit. The, uh, yeah, fuck it. Already. yeah, Yankees got the Tiger. Uh, Rays got the Tigers. Yankees got the Mets, and the Red Sox got the White Sox. So that's going to be a problem. So I guess what we can hope for is that the Yankees lose, and we can win as much as we can. Just focus on staying ahead of the Yankees for the fifth spot, if necessary. Yeah. That's going to be the plan, and then hopefully that's how it goes. I mean, you're not going to catch Tampa at this point. It's just not well, going to happen. They're saying that the Red Sox are one game ahead of the Yankees, and then the Toronto's half game out altogether. And it's Fournette right now. So yeah, this is um the uh, just back to the game here. We're ending the quarter here. So our challenge was: Will a team that leads at the end of the quarter win the game? And right now, the Buccaneers are leading the game. So we're going to see if that holds up. And there's a flag at the end of the play here. Cowboys, this is one of the best Cowboys games I've seen in a long time in terms of their overall yes. team performance. This, this is actually a a very good opener yep. because, you know, it, it's a close game. It's two, well, one franchise that has a great fan, it has a pretty loyal and yep. fan ba- uh, deep fan base. Mm. But uh, then you have Tampa Bay, really, that's like, well, you know, we got yep. Tom Brady. Right, but <laughs> we're going to suck in three years, so no one's going to care. Right, yep. All right, 28-26 to end the quarter. The Buccaneers will have to continue with the ball to start the quarter. And uh, right now, it's really on, I, mean, I guess at the end of the day, it's really on Brady and the offensive shoulders for Tampa Bay because if they can continuously score touchdowns for the rest of the game, they can hold the lead. I mean, that's really all they have to do is... You know, not punt, not kick a field goal, and make sure they score a touchdown and they're all set to go. Thoughts on that, Dan? Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's going to be up to Brady in the se- in the fourth quarter. I think the defense has done enough to try to keep you in this game. Uh, they've only allowed two offensive touchdowns every time else. I mean, the thing about it is they've been giving up the yardage. Uh, Dak Prescott has been able to pass the ball around. He's gotten over 300 yards passing. However, it's not materialized that much in the in the red zone and also in the end zone as well um, to the liking. I mean, you, you can make an argument that right now that uh, Dallas should be uh, winning this game mm. because the, the the kicker at one point blew a makeable 31-yard uh, field goal and then the extra point. So that's four points taken off the board right there, right. which would 
put you 30 to 28. Yep. That's for damn sure. <laughs> Unreal. That's what comes back to bite you. You know, it's like little things like that that I keep track of throughout games because it's usually those little mistakes tend to eat you alive later in games. No, it's true. You know, you're sitting here, it's like um, you're fighting, you know, and then you're down when you probably should have the lead. It should be Brady fighting to take the lead back. You know, if Dak, uh, if Dak, if they're still down with five minutes to go, um, the Cowboys' best option is to try to slow down. Do not try to rush it. Do just try to take as much clock as humanly possible off the board and also try to score. Um, because the last thing you want to do is give Tom Brady the ball when he's down with like two to two and a half minutes left. Mm-hmm. The last possible thing. Right. So Dallas has got to be smart in this fourth quarter. Try to stay, try to stay close, but also at the same time, uh, be smart when you're trying to hit. Mm-hmm. Don't be stupid. Be smart. Don't be stupid. 44-year-old Tom Brady. Jeez. Arian's old enough to be his dad, technically. Yeah, he's right. 68. Yeah. yeah. I fathered Brady, he said. What the hell are you talking about, Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brady. 2-4 net. Up the middle. Good gain. About seven yards. Probably going to try to mix and mix. A lot of mixing of passing and rushing coming up here, I'm expecting. Run, pass, pass, run. Combination Donald. like that. Run right on first down the every time. Jack- Go ahead. Jaguar. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, the former Jaguar. <laughs> you know what he said? He said, hate the, I hate the cons and screw AEW. He said, geez. Exactly. Yeah. This is going to be interesting. Cracking the quarter open with a run. Second and third. Uh, empty backfield. Wide uh, formation. Spread formation. Shoot ready in the shotgun. And right out inside. Slant the four net. Two, one to two yard gain there. About third and two coming up. First minute of the fourth quarter about to expire. 14 minutes to go here. And uh, like I said, our challenge for this game is the team that leads at the end of the third quarter going to be the team that wins the game. And uh, we're going to see if that happens. This game was uh, at oh. one point. You play to win the game. You play to win the game, and uh, you play to win the game. And it was twenty-eight to nineteen, a pretty big, pretty decent deficit. But uh, the Cowboys got that. I think uh, Fournette's wearing his LSU jersey underneath his uh, NFL jersey there. Brady shotgun pass complete to Evans. First down. Now it'll be interesting to see if they run the ball on first down here to keep getting that. That's what I do in Madden all the time. For when I'm closing the games out, first down run every time. Run the clock. Not you, Dan. You probably just throw Hail Marys and throw touchdowns. <laughs> no, I run, I run the ball. Um, it's usually pass, run, pass, run, pass, run. Yep. Um, except uh, two-minute drill at the half, then it's yep. just pass, 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 yep. pass, pass. Yep. Let's see here. Brady, when you got to run a single back, back corner, you know. Single back <laughs> formation, two to the right, two to the right. Brady, running play coming up. There you go. So there it is. And he's going to be stopped immediately. Probably a one-yard gain on that for Fournette until he's run back down to about the 40. Uh, they're just about at midfield now. So there you go. That's, that's going to be the strategy is get the first, run on first down, then get the first down on the second and third, you know, second and goal, third and goal, and then come back and try to run it on the next first down every single time. We get 40 seconds off the clock. So this is going to be really these second and third downs are going to be critical for the Cowboys defense. Uh, second and 10, so no gain there, but the clock is running. So let's see if they go back to a shotgun formation. Fournette is back there with Brady. Two to the right, one to the left. Evans to the left. Brady shotgun formation. He's going to throw here. Zips it to Evans. Drop pass. Somehow deflected by a cornerback or a linebacker, it appears. Looks like one of the cornerbacks deflected that pass. 12 minutes down. Uh, 12 minutes to go. In the quarter. And uh, so those second and third downs for the Cowboys defense are going to be most critical. What a defensive play right there by the corner. Trying to go for the interception. Ended up deflecting it with the tip of his fingers. Evans seemed kind of shocked by that. Because uh, that ball was right on target from Brady. And then just kind of went off a little bit and threw him off. And uh, that's they about gotta, it. Go ahead, Dan. Dallas has got to get 
Dallas has got to get Tampa off the field. Yep, right now, too. Three to the right, Hard trips form, tri trips Bunt's formation, and Brady throws it high, out deep, and caught. Nope, Chris Godwin can't handle it. Uh, he was wide open up the middle there. They had a trips bunch formation to the right, and he tried to bomb it, air it out to Godwin, and uh, it was right in his hands, right there. And he would have, he wouldn't have been able to run that in for a touchdown because I think he would have fallen anyways. But if he had caught it, he would have had that down by the ten yard line. Yeah, they would have been in the red zone. Yep. So this is great news uh, for the Cowboys, and not necessarily devastating news for the Bucks. Uh, the Bucks can punt. Still make a defensive stop, or even if the Cowboys come down and score, the Cowboy, the Bucks would still be within one touchdown to come back and win the game. So, not a dire situation for the Bucks here. Very manageable, uh, but very critical for the Cowboys. So the Cowboys absolutely needed this. The, the Bucks got some money to still play with here in this game. So here's the punt from about the 45, going deep to about the 10. Fair catch called at about the five. Um, so length of the field. Touchdown or, you know, maybe about a 60, 70 yard ball moving down the field to get in field goal range. So there we go, Dan. Uh, this is it. Essentially, this is the game right here, right? Um, well, I mean, you need something here. You need something, at least a field goal, um, at least give Tampa some sort of pressure. Um, you know, and, but at the same time, you know, if you don't get anything here, you're not a, you're not out of the wood. You're, you're still in this. It's just the fact that like your, your defense who has been playing, I feel like both defenses have been playing very, very well. Um, you know, they have given up some, I mean, the, uh, Cowboys have given up four touchdowns, but you look at this offense <laughs> That's on the, the, the Tampa Bay. You look at the Tampa Bay's offense, and it's just like, you know, 28 points ain't half bad. Yeah. No, uh, absolutely. Uh, um, yeah, but I would say to that, you know, you want to keep you want to keep Brady off the field now without, you know. You oh, without question. Yeah, you don't want to punt the ball back to him while you're still down. I mean, if, I, I would do this if I'm, the, uh, if I'm the Cowboys. I try to gingerly move the ball down the field with runs and passes, get a couple first downs, um, and then – you know, maybe start taking some bigger swipes at trying to score. But, um, you know, you can't – I mean, you really – I mean, you're really going to have to score a touchdown in, at this point because I think even if they get the field goal, Brady's just going to need a chip shot field goal to take the lead back. So it's getting down to that right now. But I, I would just move the ball down the field casually. Um, if you can't get past the 50, really if you can't get past the opponent's 40, I wouldn't go for it on fourth down at this point. It's really going to have to be just three three downs. That's it. Don't go for it on fourth down under any circumstances. So if you get down to fourth down, you're going to have to punt it, I say. Because it would be way too early to go for it on fourth. No, I agree. I mean, um... Unless it was a sneak situation, then maybe you could sneak, try to sneak it in, but, you well, know... Well, it depends I, on the yardage. I think anything yeah. under maybe two yards, you you, yeah. you might push it. But uh, if it's like fourth and five, fucking mm -hmm. punt it. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 you're out of time. You're out of time where it's like, you're still in this. You don't have to score on this drive necessarily, but you can't make any fucking mistakes. Yeah. So that, that's kind of like the pressure that you're in. And the fact is, is that, uh, Dallas has a lot of great, um, Dallas has a lot of great talent, but at the same time, uh, you know, there's a big question mark over his co over the coach. Yeah, like because Mike McCarthy has not ever been really known for game management. Yeah, uh, you know this is also the same guy that if uh, we go back to that NFC Championship a few years ago against Seattle, I mean Packers had that game won, and his play calling just completely mm -hmm. doomed them. Yeah, so it's um, spread formation for the uh, Cowboys here. Blitz by the. Uh, Almost a safety there and dropped. Third and eight coming up. Thinking about field position right now, too. This could be bad for the Cowboys, too, if they can't get a couple first downs to move this ball down the field. Yeah, they need to. Um, yeah, because then you're going to pretty much. You're putting the box almost at, like at least the 40. 
their own 40. But then you, the chances of them also going to midfield and breaking that plane is also higher. Yeah. So you need to get at least a first down here. So that way you're able to not have to punt nothing. in the end. Nothing. Incomplete. Over, over through Cooper. Punting coming up. Yeah. Three and out is not what you want here. No. You needed at least three first downs to keep yourself safe for punting, I think. Because pretty much, you know, yeah, you, you help yourself in one way, the fact that you barely took any time off the clock, yeah. but then at the same time, you also give Brady mm-hmm. all this clock, yeah. and he could just run, he could just give the ball to Leonard Fournette and just drain it. Yeah, I mean, that was about 30 seconds off the play clock, game clock right there. I think it was about 1130-something. And yeah, then, Brady uh, took like three minutes off, yep. like on the last drive. Yep. This is a nice punt, though, all the way down to the opposite 30, and now the run back, about the just before the 40. So really, Brady's only going to need about 40 yards to get a field goal to put the Cowboys in a situation where they need to score a touchdown to win or That's take a the lead punt. back. Yeah. Yeah, you got him about it looks like the 36, 37. Would you have ever imagined Byron Leftwich being the coordinator for Tom Brady? <laughs> That's no. so funny. It's like Brady. I wouldn't, because it's like Brady probably just goes up to him all the time and just be like, "Don't tell me shit about two minutes. Look at Brady one. I'm Brady. You're 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 a left witch. Just sit down. He goes actually. Wa- follow me. Follow me. See this chair? Just sit right there. See this Gatorade? Just grab that and drink that. I'll take over from here. I'm look at me. I'm the captain now. I'm TV 12. Arian should, Arian should have just said to him, been like, you know what? I'm firing my offensive coordinator. I might as well just you let, let you, you fucking run it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Brady, I mean, do Brady and Peyton Manning even need offensive coordinators, quite honestly? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess Brady does because with Josh, because he, he won yeah. championships with Dales and Charlie Weiss, unlike, you know, he didn't win anything with Bill O'Brien. Right. Right, that's exactly right. I mean, you still need that coordinator at the end of the day. No matter how much film studying, you still need someone else to kind of be over there thinking about the next plays and not having to overthink of it. You know, then then defer if you don't like the play. You know, I usually run the Madden recommendations, and I look. I, what I do is I search for the Madden recommendation, then I sort through it, find the play I want. If I don't like it, then I'll go back to the full playbook. You know what I'm saying? But I'll kind of play right out of that uh, suggestion. Yeah, I, I like the Madden uh, suggestions, to be quite honest. I usually run from that book, especially yeah. on defense. Right. Uh, but offensively, it's, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm a bit of, I, I have a certain way of doing things, but at the same time, it's like, mm-hmm. you know, it, it works. Right. Because I, I actually use a, a fullback pretty much to like the old school ways. Mm-hmm. Like short yard, any side, any time in yep. the 20-yard line, it's like, I'll run them. Why not? Yep. Buccaneers winning the Super Bowl in one season. With Tom, all Tom Brady had to do is go to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, bring a bunch of talent with them, and they win the Super Bowl. Pretty much. He was like LeBron James before, like, in yep. the NFL almost. Yep. Hey, you want to play with me? Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay, guys. Let's all go down to Tampa Bay. Come on. Let's all jump on the fun bus. Jeez. Brady, back to pass. Gronk. Gronk looks like he's still in his prime tonight. Jeez. I know. Right? He's taking the same HGH as Brady now. Hey, oh, we. Fountain of Youth. <laughs> Come to the Fountain of Youth. From Valentino, who was a friend of Giselle or whatever. <laughs> we know all the secret, the secrets to youth. Follow us. Join us. She must have learned that from the Victoria's Secret. Yeah. How can we stay young forever? Yeah. All right. Second and three. Ten minutes to go. Clock rolling. Brady out to Godwin. First down coming up. And more and tackled. That's all they need to do now is a couple first downs. Cowboys had that opportunity, but that punt kind of killed them. And then not really getting anywhere with the ball kind of killed them, too. So A 600-foot catch I... by Gronkowski from a helicopter? <laughs> oh, when he was in Arizona.
What the fuck? Yeah. I mean, I guess it's impressive. Yeah. Tony Brown loses his helmet, Madden 07 style. <laughs> now he's up and talking, smacking people's faces like, what, 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 what? I'm AB. I'm AB. What? What, 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 what? And he's smiling. <laughs> I'm AB. Shut up. Slap. <laughs> to, to, think has, to think that Brady has three straights. He has three, like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have three consecutive Madden cover athletes yeah. on the team. Yep. That's crazy. Maybe he's just like, shut up. Yeah, I know. Brady's I'm good. slipping there, tossing the ball. Caught. Jeez, that was crazy. A lot of smack talk now in this game. Blue. Blue. Uh, uh, I'm shook. Uh, I'm shook. Uh. Let's go, Dogecoin. Get up to 30 freaking cents again. Jeez. Yeah, what a week that's been. Jesus. Yeah, I know. This thing, I, I should have just sold it a week ago. Jeez. When I was like up, I'm like, yeah, I'm up like 10%. Might as well just send it, ship it all out, and get rid of it, and be done with it. Jeez. Oh, that's a false start. That's a false start. That let guard jumped. He jumped back before the ball snapped. Tom Brady, they asked Tom Brady when they were building this team, is there any other preferences that you have, Tom? He's like, yes, I do have a particular preference. Do you have any white slot receivers between like the height <laughs> of like 5'6 and 5'9? Yes, That's yes, we do. Cool. Here's our generic guy we drafted right here. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, thank you. Do you have any, like, Danny Amendola, Edelman, Welker kind of guys on this team? <laughs> yes. Just like to have one at least. Just, just, one. <laughs> just one. Check down receivers. All right, first and 15, 40-yard line, Buccaneers here. Eight minutes to go. Tom Brady, shotgun. Well, he's that guy that plays with Minnesota. I'm surprised he hasn't joined the Buccaneers either. Yeah. Adam Sayer. Right, yeah. That's a big completion right there. The guy who got in that shouting match with Belichick a few years ago. Belichick was just like, shut the fuck up. That was, wasn't was that Thielen? Yeah, I think it was Adam Thielen. Freaking asshole. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. He's John at Belichick. Belichick just is like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> of course, this guy's yelling at Belichick. He'd have like 90 Super Bowls if he played with Belichick. It's like, shut up, Dylan. Shut up. What was it that uh, that football life one where him and Derek Mason were getting, were jaw jacking? Yeah, them? yeah. Fuck you, Mason. Just fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, look at this. For now, I still can't get used, used to these running backs. With these lower numbers like this, it just—I keep thinking there's a punter out there or something, or a quarterback out there. It's just throwing me off. Reggie Bush is probably sick to himself. He's just like, if I just had my number from USC, I probably would have been so much better. Yeah. yeah Instead, exactly. I'm just doing Wendy's commercials. Yeah. <laughs> I need my number from USC, man. Give me number five, man, please. They took my goddamn Heisen. Heisman, I need this. Yep. First and ten, seven minutes to go. Clock winding down. Single back formation. How many? How many boxes of time? How many boxes? Boxes of just end around. Yeah, end around to uh, A B. Clock under seven minutes now. Out of bounds. Clock stops. 28-26, close game here. Dak Prescott rooting on his defense, trying to get one more chance. If they held him to a field goal, it's a five-point game. So that's yes. that's big. You know, if they get the touchdown, that's a nine-point game again. So that's tough to come back from. So it's going to be a field goal here by the Cowboys. And they're draining the clock. Yeah. 11 minutes down to about 6.30. Second and seven. Running play here by Fournette. And there he goes. And almost to the... Almost to the first down. About a yard shy. Third and short. Yep. Coming up. I would just run a shotgun formation here from the Bucks. 
and just try to throw it for like four or five yards. I wouldn't even try to run it and rest the ball, get you know, a running short play here. Three drives, three touchdowns in the red zones for the Buccaneers tonight. Tom Brady looks like he may be in shotgun. Nope, he's going right up to the line. Hiking the ball. It is going to be a running play, and he got through. That's a first down. So this game, this drive will continue. The clock will run. Just draining the clock. Yep. And then they're going to start this off with the first down running play now, too. Well, yeah, because it buys you at least, it takes 35 seconds right off. Yep. I mean, and at this point, it's just like slow the pace down. Yep. Yeah, Fournette found a nice little gap there. It was tough to find, but he got there. Defense is resting for the Bucks right now, too, so that's good news for them. Yes. Advantage Bucks. Five, almost a six-minute drive here. Brady throws to Godwin inside. Goes further. Fumbles the ball! Fumbles the ball! Recovered by the Cowboys. They're running it back now to the 12. Oh. Oh, no. Looks like potential pass interference by the Cowboys might get called back. That was uh, fucking euphoria for the Cowboys. Yeah, we got an injured Cowboy down on the field right now as we speak. Fumbled the ball. Little roller up along first behind the bag. It gets through Buckner. It looks like the... So it looks like, Dan, it looks like the uh, turnover is going to stand. But there was a penalty on the uh, return. Yeah. Go ahead, Dan. Continue with the play-by-play uh, -play there. No. no <laughs> Behind the bag! you out of the bag against Sue Buckner. Yeah. Here comes Knight and the Mets win it. I love how I can, uh, I can... I remember that, but when it comes to conversations that I've had in the last week, <laughs> it's like I can fucking remember Vince Scully's call from a World Series that we didn't even fucking win. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, so it looks like there was no penalty on that, Dan, at all. The flag looks like it got dropped. Uh, well, Dallas is Dallas pretty much just saved their whole saved everything in one fucking well fell yeah. swoop, and they have four minutes and fifty two seconds to get. Get it going. We need to run a stat check on Ezekiel Elliott's rushing tonight. We need to get something. We need to get some stats here. There it is. 29 yards off 10 rushes. They, as soon as I asked, they put it up on the screen. I was getting ready to oh. go to the phone. Yeah. I was like, let's see what this is. They're oh, shutting him down. Awesome. JPP swatting that ball. Mike McCarthy's just like, how can I fuck this up now? Yep. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Shotgun formation. Pass complete. And this is for down territory. Anyways, they got no choice. Oh, they don't have a chance. Yep. Reliable tight end here. Boy, Godwin was just about in the end zone, too, on that. Then that fumble occurred. I thought he was gone. Yeah. Brady probably was just like, piece of shit. Yep. You had it and lost it. Timeout. You can't be messing around here, the Cowboys, too much. Audible call. 15 seconds before the play clock's, clock's going to expire here. Up. Oh, almost jumped off sides. Almost jumped off sides again. Ball start in the backfield. No, they're saying that the Buccaneers jumped. I don't know if that was a draw or if that was a false start or what, what they're trying to do. Encroachman, five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Uh, oh, that's huge. Still third down. Okay, they're going to retain the down. That's right. I forget about that. Five-yard penalty. Encroachment's just to retain, you retain the down. Yeah, somebody jumped there. Then they tried to, in turn, blame the offensive lineman for jumping. Yeah, but that, that takes them now from a third and, like, medium to log to yep. a third and short Correct. fucking quick. Yep. So, I mean, okay. that pretty much opens up your playbook. Get out of bounds. Get out of bounds. Don't – you can't do what he just did there where you try to go back in for daylight. 
those extra two yards are not worth it. Like the no. downs are more, con the downs were worth more than the anything in the time and the downs are worth more. See, now the I'm clock's running. Good. Well, the thing is, though, too, you want to try to make this, you want to try to take also as much time as humanly possible off the clock. Not until you get not, past the 50. That's true. Once you get past but the I'm, 50, you can start thinking that way. Right. There's a completion up the middle. Yeah. Yeah, I mean you can you can think that way, but once you get past the fifty, then you want to kind of micromanage the clock. But right now you're just trying to you want to make sure you can get to the finish point first, so at least you can get down you to the fifty. To the yeah, because yeah. with the, when this clock's just running like this, like crazy, you know, you get three timeouts plus the two minute warning. If you can get as, as far down the field as possible with before the two minute warning, that's good because then you don't have to expend your timeouts right well, now. I love it. I think too is the fact that the fourth quarter just feels like it's like actually like five minutes. Yeah, I know exactly. Here we go. Big oh oh something happened there. He missed through that. It's an incomplete. Oh come on, it's not a fumble. Yeah, that receiver should have used better judgment. He was trying to go for the promised land, but incomplete. Yeah, I was incomplete. He was throwing here. That's a throw. That's a throw. Yep, he threw it. Yes, yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely. He was winding that thing Would up. Would that be considered? No, that wasn't intentional grounding, I don't think. Because uh, he had two guys on him. Yeah, they might review that, though, now. They might. They might come back and say they're not going to do it. The Tampa Bay may chat, try to see if they can contest that to be reviewed. But it could be considered a defensive play um, where the defensive player got to the quarterback, altered the trajectory of the pass, um, which would avert the intentional grounding call. So, yeah, I think that that would slide in that, that respect. And he's going to get through here. There it is. That's money right there. There you go. And there's a flag. Jeez. I think we're safe to say we're rooting for the Cowboys in this game. <laughs> yes, no, I think it's safe to say. They need to... Um, Offense. You ask... Oh, boy. Oh, stop shooting yourselves in the fucking foot. Yep. That was a money first down, too. God damn it. Now you've... Yeah, P I mean, he didn't lose the down, but that does two things. That stops the clock. Yep. And also, it like it negates everything you just did. Yeah, it's holding. Now look how far yeah, back that's... they go now. See, this is why I was all for conserving the clock down was because of things like this happening. That's why yeah. I countered that point because I just said the keys to get – that's a jump. That's an encroachment. They should be throwing a flag on that. He jumped off sides. Got it. Okay, so that knocks down. Hey, that was an encroachment. They should have called the penalty on that. He ju he jumped off sides. He was leaning right over. Prescott has had an excellent game tonight. Yeah, he has. For first game back, that's a lot to ask. And now they, we're at the two-minute warning. They were regulating his... Uh, I don't know how much of the hard knocks you saw. They were regulating his uh, schedules, like his practice schedule lengths. They would only allow right. him to do so much, and then they'd say, okay, well, you have to sit out or watch or, you know, things like just to kind of, you know. Well, yeah, you got to be know. able to get your – to get back into it, like, you know. Right. There's just that graphic with the red and the white jerseys. It's like, this is a continuity issue. Yep. Right, exactly. Yeah, so that's, that, that's, that's kind of my thinking is that I think that with the, the clock – uh, or clock maintaining scenario you were talking, I think it's just best to get to that 50 and then you can play tinker with the clock a little bit after. But when you get deep, it's like you never know how long it's going to take you to get the hell out of there. And you don't know how much time you're going to need. So that's, that's what my concern was. I didn't expect that to go that bad like that. <laughs> They'd actually be back at like the 30. But um, yeah, that holding call killed them. They, you can't have that. Well, the thing about it is, though, is that it puts them in a – a pretty good position because I got two minutes left. You know, they're in a manage. It's a manageable drive. I think they still have all three of their timeouts. 
Um, yeah, and the chances of if the way that it looks right now, minus a turnover, um, Brady wouldn't get the ball back. Like unless there was like thirty to forty seconds left. It depends on it depends on what he's gonna what he's gonna do. I wouldn't expect Ezekiel Elliott to get the running. This is not they're not gonna run the ball here. Everything's gonna be pass, yeah. pass, pass, and more pass. Keep those passes between about four and fourteen yards. Don't go for anything deeper yeah. than that. Because you start going deeper than that, you're just blowing it down. You know, you you're playing a chance, but you're you're going for too much. I did, yeah, I just keep it between like four yards and fourteen yards. And, and if, you're, if you're if you're Tampa Bay's defense, you try you. I would limit blitzing and just try to play sure. everything. Just try to play. Just cover the pass. Maybe go man to man. Maybe a little zone. Yeah. Send one or two guys in a blitz situation. Everybody else falls back into like a disguised zone, arguably between like I said, man or zone, and then just try to play as much uh, zone containment as possible. But uh, this guy, this is gonna get interesting. But they got to get that ball past that 50 before they do anything. Once you get to the 50, then it's just about getting down to field goal range at this point because they don't even need a touchdown, right? It's just a field goal they need. Uh, with an unreliable right. kicker who can redeem himself here. Two minutes to go, third and 11. This is fourth down territory. Yep. Here we go. That's the pass you want. That's the first down you want. Get right out of bounds. Oh, boy. You got everything you could ask for on that. Yeah. He got the first down plus extra yardage plus out of bounds. He got basically three things out of that. Jeez. Looks now, like to your point, now you start work. Now you start working the clock a little bit now. You work the clock here. Yep. Because the last thing you want is Tom Brady to have, like, more than – you, if you get that clock to maybe a minute to a minute fifteen, you did your job. Yep. Okay, he got the catch at the, the distance needed, crossed the first, got the first down, got extra yardage, and then plus the um, the out of bounds there. So okay, now what? Let's see the scenario here. I gotta, give, I gotta give credit to Dak too because there were guys at his feet. You know, he's probably a little extra nervous with his feet because he's yeah. coming off the ankle injury and he yeah. was able to get it right there where he needed to go. Yep. Flag. Timeout Dallas. Okay, Dallas isn't afraid to use okay. their timeouts now. Now, here's let's look at the scenario here. From, let's, you were talking about the Tampa Bay perspective. Let's talk about that. Three timeouts. That's good news for the Buccaneers right now. So they can manage that. That's good. But Cowboys are still going for four downs. But right now, you're just trying to get down to field goal range, I'd say, and that, that's about it. So, um, yeah, like you said, I think, you know, I think there's a high chance that kicker might blow the damn field goal to win the game, honestly, if you want my damn point. Because they, they're really – they, um, Sorry. No, I would say, you know, he missed a 31-yarder, almost nailed a 60. Yeah, he missed a 60. He was closer on the 60-yard one than he was on the 31-yard one. You know, so it's – it's going to get interesting in that regard to see what happens there. Is, the way that I've seen his kicking tonight, everything has been going to the left. So if you wanted to, you might want to have to get, might want to try to get to the right side of the field, try to get to the right hashtag, and then see if you can get it. Because everything it seems like is going to the left on his kicking tonight, which sometimes happens. You know, they're just hitting the ball at an awkward rate, and you know, going the complete opposite direction of where you wanted to go. Yeah. So you need to be able to hopefully get to the right hashtag, to mm -hmm. the, right, uh, the right side, and to see if we can kick that, because everything seems to be going from the whole lot. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what ends up happening there. That's going to be a critical situation, too. Um, yeah, so they're going to have to think about that, too, how they're going to want that ball positioned. Um, now I'd say continue passing the ball through the, oh, well, they could arguably run the ball, but this, the running game's struggling. I don't know if they want to get too confident with running the ball. Arians could just simply not call a timeout and force them to expire the clock on themselves. So I'd keep throwing the ball through the air, obviously, and then about 48-yard passes on range. Now I'd tighten the pass range a little bit. Don't go too deep too much. And then just try to get the open man and go. So they, they can get this down. They just got. They're working it nice. They, they make their play call. Their coordinate. Their coordinator's done a great job tonight. That's one thing that's for sure. Um, he's been calling a lot of good plays. 
consistently throughout this game. They did a great job. It's, it's just too bad, like I said, that their kicker missed some field goals there, a field goal and an extra point, because they're missing about four points they could have. But I, nonetheless, you know, they're right there. Brady's just completely stoic right now. He's dying to get that ball back, so that's good. They're, they're right within that range right now, or even like a 5 to 10 yard pass. There you go. There's the play action. See, shit like that. They got, you know, they're in the 30. They're. Uh, it is it's like an extra timeout, though, when you're throwing the ball, when you get like one outside, because then it's like. All right, now it's an extra down. You can lose the down, but at the same time, it's not back. Yep. Running back out there. It's very crampy looking right now between the defense and offensive sets. It's not very spread. This could be a run. Yep. Okay, that's actually a good play right there because that got five, plus the clock's moving a little bit, so that's not bad. And someone called time out here. That clock stopped. That's a good strategy. Yep. He gets okay. you the 30. There goes the Buccaneers. They called theirs. Plus, again, it's on the right side of the field. Yep. Which, again, as I mentioned earlier, the kicker has been cooking more to the left. So maybe they're listening to this program. Maybe yeah. one of the coordinators. They still talk like, about this every single year, this back-to-back -back Super Bowl stuff every year. They're like, back-to-backs. Patriots. Patriots had a couple opportunities to do it again, too. Yeah. 51 and 52, they could have narrowed down. It sucks. Seahawks had a chance. The Chiefs had a chance. All right. 143. Yeah, Seahawks had a shot, yeah. yeah. So this could really just be come down to a field goal battle here. Cowboys need a field goal, and if they get a field goal, the Bucks need a field goal. Third and six. Critical. Come on. Come on. Oh. Oh. Flag down. That was bad for the Cowboys, I thought. Holding penalty. Uh, Jeez. Not the not not what you want. Ten yard penalty. Third down. Not all bad, I guess, in that sense that it's third down. So they still got two cracks at it, but. Oh, that's not true. The best, not the best situation. It's manageable, but it's not the best situation. Look at that. I think you're right. I think Dask Prescott's pitter pattering with his feet back there. He doesn't know. He doesn't have confidence to, to scramble and break that. Plus, these, that offensive line was freaking decimated on that play. They got destroyed. Yeah. Third and 16, three to the left. So they're going back to the left here, Dan. There it is. Money. Good. Co oh, good. Very. Oh, very good. And right back to the 30. So that's good news. Let's see if someone calls timeout, and they are. Who's this going to be? The Bucks. It's got to be the Bucks. Yep. Buccaneers timeout used. Uh. Now this is where, if you're the Dallas Cowboys, you. This is what you do if you're the Cowboys. Shotgun formation, two to the left, two to the right, and a running back that can receive. And you try to get like a four to ten yard gain. Uh, sorry, it's already fourth down. Shit, that's right, because it was third down. Yeah, fourth and six. Damn it, I've lost track of that. You have, you got a kick here. Yeah, you, you, you got to kick. Here. It's this fourth a, and six. This is, a, this is a choppy field, though. This is one of the worst fields yeah. in the league. There's the left hashtag, Dan. Thank you. Everything's been going thing. to the left. Thank you. He's going to miss this fucking thing. Yeah, it, it, everything has been going to the left all he night. Got this kid. He got it. He got it. So, Dan, you were saying it was going to be about a minute, minute 10 to a minute 30 for Tom Brady? Yeah. And there you have it. And a timeout left for the Buccaneers. So Tom Brady is in an ideal scenario right now. And he 24 can... to go. Yep. Man, I thought he was going to miss. I just had a feeling he was going to miss. That was almost blocked, too. He got through. If the, if the Buccaneers come back, 
that makes that blown mm-hmm. field goal and the extra point that mm-hmm. much more important. Right. Let's add the points. They're up one, so that would be a five-point lead right now if exactly. that was the case. So there you have it. That stuff just we're comes back the, to bite you. Where all they have to do now is get to maybe the 30 or 40-yard line yep. and get a field goal. And then, of course, if Godwin didn't fumble the ball, I guess uh, they uh, they would still have the lead, right? <laughs> No reaction to the field goal. None. Yeah. There's it's the right hashtag, the place. right the right hash mark miss. Center missed. Uh, missed it. Yep. And then left missed it. Jeez. The 60 yard will let slide. And then there's the left yeah, side the hash mark. Is 60, so 50, 50 shot. It. Yeah. But you see everything was going to the left. Yeah. Like, which is surprising. He must have just tried it at a different angle. They were probably just like, ah, just, like, yeah. move your, I don't know. All right, well, I guess I guess this is all being uh, this is a Tom Brady fourth quarter comeback moment. To think that they were up 28 to 19 and now trail yes. by one point. And our challenge for this game was the team that won the third quarter or had led at the end of the third quarter was going to win this game. And as of right now, the Buccaneers have not scored in this game. Now, here we go. Tom Brady time now. And it's hard to sit here and say Tom Brady's going to lose this game, knowing what he does. Yes, yeah, so we've seen it for 20 years in New England, so. There it is. Now, this guy just wants to go right out of bounds, right about there. Is that McCoy? Brian suck up, kicker. Fucking suck up. <laughs> Shut up, you suck up. He must have got made fun of so bad with that name as a kid. Second 118 two. to go. Yep. Nope. Nothing. And, ooh, Evans is Evans is struggling to catch those balls where the defensive back sli- you know, kind of swats the ball down. He kind of – because both times that's happened recently, he's actually been – his hands have been within the vicinity of that yeah. ball. But it's like his eyes are, it's like he's almost like getting thrown off by the deflection. Yeah. In minute 13, I mean, the thing about it is, is that drop ball, like uh, any incomplete pass uh, actually helps you in this situation. Yes, you lose the down, but at the same time, it does stop the clock. Yeah. Third and two. Oh, got that. Clock's running. So they only got to go about another 30 yards here. They got, they can spike the ball. They can get the ball out of bounds. Clock's running. This is where you're going to want to get that 20-yard pass in. Oh, that's a jump. Flags all over the place. Three of them. Left, ta- left tackle. So they're going to need like that Troy Brown Super Bowl 36-38 play right here, where the ball just goes from one end of the field to the other. For a first down, they move you back. they're getting moved back five, and there's only 54 seconds left. Yep. What's that situation like? Is it down? What do they got? Like one, one timeout. Okay. Which is going to have to be conserved yeah, for the field goal, challenge. as you know. Yeah. They're going to have to get. They're going to have to get a big pass play here, 10 yards or more. Yeah. They're really going to have to move this damn thing because by the time, but well, the problem is too is that the more yardage you get, the more time that gets run off the clock. By the time you get to the first down, it's kind of like. But then of course, if you make small passes, then the clock still comes off anyways, and it kind of adds up. So it's they're going to have to get down to the 50 like now. Here it comes. They're going to go short and out. Gronk almost hesitated enough to get shut down there. He was like his body like slowed down completely. So that's good. They're going to need a bunch of those. That's what Brady's going to do. He's going to look downfield, see his options. If he doesn't get it, he's going to go for check downs without a bounce. Then he's going to run it out. Just dump it. Yeah. Okay. Looks like some personnel change there. They put Bernard in as running back. That's who he's looking for. Yep. So there it is. Two left, one wide, tight end Gronk, and a running back. 
And right up the middle, strike over the 50. There's the 45, close to the 40. They're going to spike the ball now. 39, 37 seconds ticking. They called their timeout, by the way. Bronk is... Oh, they're going for it. Here it is. There's the big pass play. Brady, nothing. That timeout's gone, Dan, I just realized. I didn't see them call a timeout. Oh. Where'd the timeout go? I don't know. They used it at some point. It's weird. What, did Gronk not get out of bounds? 24 seconds. All he really needs to do now is a field goal range pass and out of bounds. Yeah, Gronk's coming out. He's too much. Uh, he, was, he was slowing down on that pass reception he got. I think maybe, maybe just want to try to bomb. I don't know if you want to bomb this in the end zone and try to risk getting picked, though. There's the 10-yard pass right there on the money. Caught out of bounds. There you go. They just won. Bang. Yep. Typical Brady play right there. And Godwin redeemed himself from earlier. Yep. I don't think they're going to call that push I off. I was thinking, though, earlier... Um, now, why, you know, why, why even do anything here now if you're the Bucks? Why even? Oh, just to trim the clock down a little bit. Maybe. Yeah, take the ball, throw it the, out. Uh, yeah, why even take that risk? Uh, let's see. That's reasonable contact by Godwin. I would say that that's not a offensive pass interference. Yeah, that's reasonable contact. Yeah, that's reasonable. I think that might have been a bit of a flop on the defensive player. Sure. I agree with that, too. That oh, might have yeah. been an oversell. I don't know why. They're just going to probably just dump this ball out of bounds repeatedly. Yeah, would, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, just trying to kill the clock, I guess. There it is. He's just going to toss it. And there's no guarantee that kicker's going to hit the field goal either. Yeah. I mean, really? yes, it's a makeable range, yeah. but. Yeah, I don't know why if you want I think you want to go forward on third down here with the kick. Yeah. I don't know if you want to wait till fourth down. I think they're threading this way too fucking much. I feel like they're getting too cute for their own game. They are. They are getting too cute. They might end up working out for them, but I think they're... There's the blitz. 007. Now if they mess up the snap, there's nothing you can really do now. Where you could burn no. it down at least. This is getting interesting here, huh? <laughs> he should be fine. Um... But anything can happen. 36 yards should be automatic. Yeah, it's a big range, but at the same time, I mean, anything can happen. I mean, yep. Cowboys missed a 31-yarder uh, earlier. Um, as Mark alluded to earlier, this is one of the toughest, worst, toughest services in the NFL. So, who knows? Got it. Game over. Bucks won. Game over. Jeez. Yeah, it's hard to like say Brady's not going to pull that off late in the game when he knows all the management, you know. Cowboys have played well, though. Yeah, they played a great game. Yeah, the Cowboys played well. Yep. And, of course, if the Cowboys were terrible, this uh, ended yeah. being terrible this season, what does that say about the Bucks stuff? Look at that. He got it. Well, this was an outstanding game to call for the show tonight. I'll tell you that much. Joe, uh, Joe, talking about hell yeah, go Bucks. <laughs> Joe, you're such a fair weather, and you don't even know it. <laughs> I, guess, I guess I guess that's why you know you're a Washington fan because it's like I gotta have a secondary team. Like he he let what he did was literally jump from the Patriots bandwagon to the Bucks bandwagon. He's just like, oh Brady's my quarterback. 
thought you were goddamn uh, and, NFL it. NFL on Fox has already declared that the Bucks have won the game. Of course. CNN, what's their projections? <laughs> well, what's her and CNN can now project that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to win tonight's game. So Zerline cost the, cost the Cowboys the game is the bottom line here. Missed oh, field yeah, goal. Yeah. One of the missed and field the goals point. and the extra point. Just kneel the thing. Or just, yeah, touch back. I want to see if NFL and Fox did not delete their post yet. No, they kept it. Someone goes, wouldn't be a Brady win without the refs out. Well, I got to say that um, the Cowboys got a lot of good calls, though. They, yeah, you know. <laughs> the NFL's like, we're going to have Zerline go out there and miss a couple. That way Brady can just get the nice little... Uh, Then we're going over and talking to Brady and being like, sorry, I fucked up that fumble. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fuck it happen again. That was a good game. Competitive. Yeah. I mean, Dallas is going to be good. They'll probably, they might meet each other down the line again. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. It could be the playoffs, like in the, in the second round or yep. something. Could be different. Who knows? Yep. Well, a lot of people are contending that there might have been offensive pass interference by Godwin. I still think it was a reasonable call. I think that there wasn't too much egregious pushing off there. I think it was situational. And here we go. Oh, this going to run. Oh, that's kind of probably a smart idea. Just run the ball, and that's. Oh, what? What we going to hear? Oh, and oh. Game over, man. That was a classic, Dan. Pretty good game to start the season good. off. That was a good game. Yeah. Man. Yeah, it's a good one Sunday night, too. Uh, Rams and Bears Sunday night. That's going to be a pretty good game. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be good. Um you know, I'll be. I'm more interested to see what Mac Jones is going to be able to do this weekend as well. Yeah. I think uh, we're going to be looking heavily into that. Of course, Eric will want to know what happens with the Bears. So, and the Rams. I mean, they've gotten better. Uh, they're going to be one of the teams I think that's going to be there in the end in the NFC at least. Yeah, I agree. I think the Rams are going to be beasts this year. With you know, what it is Stafford too. That's a nice upgraded quarterback compared to what they previously had and. You know, you, you don't know how many times their defense makes a stop, but Goff can't come back with some points. And if Stafford can do that, that could completely change their team's fate. Yeah, Stafford's uh, never been in, like, gone deep in the playoffs. I think he's, I think McVay's going to have a good, be able to work with him well. So, I mean, you know, I, I think that, I think the Rams are gonna are gonna be the uh, are gonna be one of the teams to really contend with the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you as well. I think the Rams are gonna be a uh, heck of a team uh, for sure. So it was a uh, Brady uh, Brady drive right at the end there. One one timeout was all he really needed, and uh, he was able to uh, get that ball managed all the way down the field for a uh, field goal catch. Get her, so, get her done, man. Get her done. Looking at some of the comments online right now. There's some people complaining, some people fanboying. Uh, kind of a mixed reaction here. I'm going to share the uh, final score to the page. And we're going to wrap up the show here in just a few minutes. That was a heck of a game. I mean, I thought the Cowboys looked good. Dak Prescott had a great game for someone that missed it pretty much most of the season last yeah, year. Yeah, Dak had a great game. He had a great game. Yeah. It's going to take him a while to kind of get all the kinks out, get his confidence back a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. I'm hearing that yawn, Dan. I think it's time to call the show off for the night. And uh, right. so, All right. Great night. Great show, Dan. Thanks again. Back-to-back -back shows, you and I together last Sunday and tonight, uh, getting the show done. Uh, great game tonight. Can't ask for much more. We'll be back next Thursday. 
we'll see if maybe we do another Thursday game or go back to typical uh, show scheduling. So we'll see what we do. We'll figure something out as we take a look. Uh, but that's about it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, have a great night. From Mazza Media, I am Mark. Dan, thank you so much once again. I appreciate it. About a four-hour show right on the money tonight. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's time to leave. 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 All right, later, Dan. Take care. Everyone take care. Thank you for tuning in. Mass yeah, Media. Bye.